This is ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. We welcome you to Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey, as the Scarlet Knights host West Virginia in a Big East matchup. And welcome to Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Valvano and his dream to defeat cancer. With Bob Greasy and Chris Billman, I'm Dave Pash, and guys, a lot of talent on display in this game today. Rutgers doing it with rookies, West Virginia with veterans. Well, let's start with West Virginia and take a look at the fifth-year senior quarterback at Jared Brown, a true dual threat. Obviously, he can hurt you with his arm, but he's a big, powerful runner. Then move aside, here comes Noel Devine. Little guy, and you can stop him. You can stop him, but if you blink, he's gone in a heartbeat, Grease. And Dave, the rookies you uh, referred to for Rutgers are both true freshmen on the left. Tom Savage, the quarterback, took over nine games ago, seven and two as a starter, and Mohamed Sanu, a wide receiver, a true freshman, come in. He has lit it up. The, pre the, the present is now, but the future for Rut Rutgers football is very bright with those two young men. The past has not been so good, though, against West Virginia. The Mountaineers have won the last 14 meetings, but, hey, the Nets finally won a game last night, so <laughs> all things are possible in the state of New Jersey. Hey, Coach Chiano doesn't like to talk about that past. Yeah, that has nothing to do with 2009, you know, right? Well, they're all He's right. Yeah. Well, they're all in 14, and Greg Chiano is 0 and 8 against West Virginia. So, and, and why is that, guys? I mean, I mean, why is that? Sometimes it's the uniform colors it's just something sometimes you go into a game you know you're going to have a good feeling about winning and sometimes i used to go into games and i had a you didn't i don't know how about this game's going to turn out you know it's matchups and uh, west virginia Rutgers has had a hard time matching west virginia athletically over the years guys a lot uh, hanging in the balance here in terms of bowl implications depending on not only the winner of this game but the winner of the cincinnati pit game that game's about five minutes away from kicking off who do you like in that game today in the big east championship well, i saw a little shot a little earlier of the weather that was over there and if the weather is bad that cincinnati offense through the air a lot of it is through the air with brian kelly uh, I, I would think that cincinnati would have trouble playing in bad weather on the road i think Dion lewis is going to have a big game and the other thing is pittsburgh can bring pressure with just four with that defensive line they can drop seven to handle the short possession passing game of the bearcats Rain here in Piscataway. The lights are on. Temperature around 40 degrees. Rutgers kicking off. And Mark Rogers had trouble with it back at the 10-yard line. And he won't even get to the 15. Khalil Glaude, the first to greet him inside the 15-yard line. Jarrett Brown, 10-3 as a starting quarterback, fifth-year senior, one of those wins three seasons ago, three overtimes when West Virginia beat Rutgers when both teams were ranked in the top 20. He took over for Pat White that day and is replacing the outstanding quarterback of the Mountaineers now with the Miami Dolphins. Noel Devine motions out of the backfield and Brown to throw on first down. And it's complete over the middle. Jock Sanders picks up about six yards on first down as you see the starting offensive players at the top of your screen. Well, I like the play call just to, if anything, to get your quarterback in rhythm. And Jared Brown is a rhythm passer, but to get everybody involved. And he does a good job of spreading the ball around the different playmakers on the Mountaineer offense. West Virginia leading the Big East in rushing. And Rutgers second in the conference in rush defense. And this is going to be a first down out across the 25-yard line is Jock Sanders. And near the 29 as we look at our impact players now, brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Well, Jared Brown has waited a long time to be the star. And guess what? He's been a star this year. Outstanding player and having an outstanding year. There you go, the speedster. He can explode on you at any time. Noel Devine in on defense at 6'5". Robert Sands will be an impact player today. And you mentioned Devine over 1,230 yards on the season rushing as Brown has Sanders wide open downfield. Sanders has touched it on the first three plays for West Virginia, and they're in Rutgers territory. If you're playing cover two defense, boys, you have to have a linebacker carry the inside receiver to the safeties. Why? Because he splits the safeties, and there's no help. One of the linebackers has to jump him to help his safeties out. 
28 yard pass play and West Virginia no huddling as usual. And Brown faked everybody out inside the 20 inside the five and out of bounds. Everybody on Rutgers fell for the fake handoff by the quarterback Jared Brown 38 yard run. I think what we're seeing is Rutgers defensively right there. They're looking for Navine to get the ball. He has not touched it yet. All the passing is going other places and this a fake to Novine yesterday in talking to the Rutgers coaches. They said we the first thing is we've got to stop Noel Devine. He hasn't touched it yet and they've moved it down the field. From the five, first and goal. Here's Devine with his first touch, and he's got a touchdown. Great opening first drive by the Mountaineers on the road. Too easy and great play calling on the side of West Virginia. Jeff Mullen and that offensive staff knowing knowing that there everybody's going to be looking for Noel Devine and moving the ball down there. Just really good call, play calling on on their behalf. Divine second in the Big East in rushing. That's his 12th touchdown of the season. And freshman Tyler Bittenkurt, who won the Pittsburgh game last week with a 43 yard field goal as time expired, pokes it through. Two things, boys, right there the tempo. It came out fast tempo, quick plays. That bothered the Rutgers defense. And they're slanting away from the play, which makes the offensive line's job much easier. You saw the front seven for Rutgers go to the left. As you see it, take a look. They're all going inside. Noel Devine showing patience and burst. And when you're that little and you can hide behind those defensive linemen, a lot of time it's hard for safeties and linebackers to pick them up. But that was a right call against the right defense if you're a Mountaineer offensive player. Outstanding call, as you mentioned, Bob. They hit them. They hit them in their weakness. Five play, 86 yard drive. It took 152 off the clock. And Cincinnati Pittsburgh playing for the Big East Championship. But if West Virginia wins and Cincinnati wins, the Mountaineers, by virtue of beating Pittsburgh, will finish second. Now, in terms of bowl tie ins, the Big East doesn't have a rule where you have to have uh, only one fewer win to go above a, a team that has a better record than you. So uh, all indications are West Virginia is going to go to the Gator Bowl regardless of the outcome. But again, that depends on what happens in the Cincinnati Pitt game. Depending on who you talk to, West Virginia could still go to the uh, Gator Bowl above Cincinnati, even if Cincinnati were to lose today to Pittsburgh. Well, what really helps in the Big East is how well your team travels as far as fans. Yep. And anybody that knows anything about college football and the passion of Mountaineer fans, they know they're going to travel. The bottom line is Sunday night at about 8 o'clock, 8.30, we'll, everybody will know where yep. everybody's going. And you can watch that selection show on ESPN on 8 o'clock tomorrow night as uh, the short kickoff is fielded at the 31 yard line by Eric LeGrand. So that's where Rutgers will start its first possession. Tom Savage, who has set the biggest record for passing yards by a true freshman quarterback, 7 and 2 record. Replacing Mike Teal, who's now in the NFL. Dominic uh, Natale started the uh, season. Fifth year senior for Rutgers. And uh, this young man, Savage, came in in the second half. Natali had three interceptions in the first half, and Natali uh, uh, was a bench. Savage came in, and he's been in there ever since. Savage, a big kid, 6'5, 225, 230 pounds. He finds his tight end, Shamar Grays, for about seven yards as we take a look at our impact players. Brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Looking forward to seeing young Tom Savage, and I think you guys are too out there. He has really lit it up this year. Good future ahead for him. Mohamed Sanu, the same thing, a true freshman, outstanding wide receiver, will run the Wildcat for this team. And Devin McCourty. Not only is he good on defense, but look for him on special teams. He's got seven career blocks. Sanu is in there now at quarterback on second down and short. And trying to get to the outside, but West Virginia's got a lot of speed. Sanu last week had 148 yards rushing against Louisville. That was Louisville. This is West Virginia, much better in faster defense. Nate Sowers made the tackle. There's no question, though, Sanu is going to be a player. Freshman from South Brunswick, New Jersey. He's 
Savage back in their quarterback now on third down and six. Savage with a ton of time, and he's got Graves for the first down into West Virginia territory at the 41, brought down by Kent Richardson. Graves coming into the game has only had two receptions starting out. Now he has, or 10 receptions, he has two this game. And again, it's running down the middle of the field. Now, I don't know if that was the right route, but it worked out because anytime you have Sanu and Graves that close together, somebody ran the wrong route because obviously when two receivers are together, you're bringing more defenders in. But Savage, when you got it going, you got it going. And a big target in Graves at old, six foot four. And a linebacker knows that. And those receivers aren't supposed to be that <laughs> close <laughs> together. No, no. <laughs> Mistake. Of course, he liked it when two guys where he could light one of them up. Yeah. As uh, the Antoine Williams, another freshman for Rutgers, takes it off left edge and gets about three or four. West Virginia starting defensive players up top. It's a different defense now. It's a 3-3-5, and a lot of teams implemented a 3-3-5 to go against spread offenses. And West Virginia is the only defense in the Big East. Three down linemen, three linebackers, five defensive backs. But what you'll see is Sowers, number 12, he acts like a linebacker. Right here he is on your screen. And he plays up close to that line of scrimmage, and a physical kid and a big kid inside. Play fake for Savage. And dumping it off. First down, Graves again. And look at him go. Breaking tackles all the way to the 20. I like the play call. They had both wide receivers split out to the wide side, a little play action and roll out. And then he hits, hits Graves, who is sneaking out behind the line of scrimmage. Nice catch by Graves and a good job of running. That's a good play when you sneak that backer tied in behind the line of scrimmage. It's hard for those linebackers to pick up their coverage. 17 yard pickup. So Rutgers moving it down the field. <laughs> and again, Savage with time ball is tipped and incomplete. Robert Sands was back there and had a beat on it, but it was too far for him to run. It's a good play by the defensive lineman in the screen, Julian Miller, to get the big Paul up because he was hitting Sanu across the middle, and Sanu had room to run. You see Sanu lined up inside. Julian Miller will get that big Paul up. If he doesn't get the Paul up, Sanu catches about five yards, and the nearest defender next to him was about 15 away. Sanu takes it up the field, and great run after catch ability would have made something happen big. Play clock down to five. And going to be a running play. Joe Martinick breaking one tackle. And brought down by JT Thomas. No gain. Chris Neal hit him initially in the backfield. It'll bring up third down and ten. Let's see if you have Graves still in your playbook. I mean, Graves is obviously a part of that man's offensive game plan today, Greg Schiano. And he's a hard matchup. He's a hard matchup for linebackers, and he's almost too big for safeties. So right now you have Sidney Glover. Here's Graves, the guy they've been going to. That's Sidney Glover right there. That's a smaller safety on a big tight end. Savage, and that pass too high. He had for it. Five foot, eight inch Tim Brown. If he was five ten, he might have caught it. Yeah, that one's on the that one's on the quarterback. Uh, he's limping. Tim Brown has been injured coming into the ball game and that would be a, a, a big loss if uh, he couldn't continue but that ball was way overthrown on Savage and he knows it last week Brown playing with that injury still caught seven passes in a win against Louisville San San T on now for a 38 yard field goal attempt he's missed eight times though this year and he squeaks that one through the right upright So Rutgers comes up with three points on his first drive. Back in Piscataway, New Jersey, West Virginia leading Rutgers 7-3. Scarlet Knights able to get a field goal on their first drive after West Virginia marched down the field in less than two minutes. That was a good answer by Rutgers because as you know, West Virginia can hurt you, hurt you in a hurry. 
Rutgers needed to do something to respond, and they got points off their first ball possession. Teddy Delagana kicking away to Tavon Austin, who does have a kick return for a touchdown this year. He's a true freshman, and this time he's out across the 20-yard line. Well, guys, we talked about how quickly West Virginia scored, and this offense has been pretty good for a while. This is the eighth consecutive year where the Mountaineers have won at least eight regular season games. Well, they've had Pat White for a, for a big yeah. part of that. And a lot of the credit has to go to Jeff Mullen, the offensive coordinator. But West Virginia's offense, they're a spread. Get the ball down the field, and they've always had good runners. Well, and they know what to recruit. They recruit to their offense, and their players respond to this offense, and they fit right in. It's just been a great job from Bill Stewart, from Rich Rod when he was there, to Bill Stewart now just keeping it going. Jared Brown on first down will hand it off and Devine to the outside and he'll get out of bounds at about the 32 yard line gain of about eight starting defense for Rutgers at the top of your screen. By the way uh, Chris nice coat. I thought it had to be below zero for you to wear a coat. Well, I just wanted to fit in with you guys. Okay. All right. It's my Arthur Fonzarelli jacket. Man. <laughs> hey, the weather is good. The weather the forecast is for it to get a lot worse than it is right now. The weather's the temperatures in the 30s and we're expecting some light rain or light snow. Uh, at least by, ha by yeah. halftime. It's been yeah. raining off and on so far, but snow possibly by the end of the game as the temperature drops into the 30s, maybe even the 20s. And it's windy down on the field, too. On second and one, Brown gets clocked. Big hit by Eric Legrand. Loss on the play of one. And right now, 41. Windchill 35 and again gust to 16 miles an hour but on the field we noticed it uh, before the game when uh, during the national anthem some of the flags were out and the wind was whipping down there. And if you're Rutgers defense you want all the snow the rain and the wind you can find <laughs> to slow this team down. Jared Brown wants to discuss things. No timeout. West Virginia, Bill Stewart and company will talk about it. So will Greg Schiano see what he can come up with defensively against the Mountaineers on third down when we come back. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Dr. Pepper. The coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper will be awarded to the 2010 BCS National Champion. Back at Rutgers, where it is cold. Temperature dipping into the 30s, maybe the 20s by the end of today. Both these teams with eight wins playing for perhaps bowl positioning. Depending on what happens in the Cincinnati Pittsburgh game West Virginia leading third down and Jared Brown going to get taken down in the backfield George Johnson got off a block and made a play. I don't like that call Jared Brown is not a guy you want running a sweep for you. He's more of a power quarterback run him up inside but don't run him around the end. You see never George, got containment. Yeah. Yeah. George Johnson takes a big Tyler Urban to tight end. Got his hands inside. Man with the inside hands usually wins that battle. Sheds the blocker in a good open field tackle on the big quarterback. I'm with you, Chris. Put the ball in the, in the hands of Noel. If you're going outside. Yeah. Scott Kozlowski to boot it away. Greg Schiano told us yesterday that he's worried about a fake punt by West Virginia as Sanu comes up with a fair catch. All right now we're going to go to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. Dave, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh for the Big East Championship and our Taco Bell studio update. And I mean the Panthers just smashed Cincinnati. This is a fourth down play. Deion Lewis converts. 12 plays, 56 yards. Lewis carried it 11 times for 51 yards, including the touchdown. Pittsburgh eating up the clock early and up 7-0 on the Bearcats. Yeah, that's going to be a tough tough game for Cincinnati and their finesse offense and their passing all that's a that's a tough smash mouth game with that running game of Pittsburgh Pittsburgh here's Sanu playing the quarterback position in the Wildcat pushes the pile for seven Robert Sands brought him down more college football tonight final piece of the championship puzzle will be in place that's a Texas wins otherwise who knows who will play in the national title game Texas Nebraska in the Big 12 Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game on ABC 
tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Colt McCoy, the most wins by a quarterback in FBS history. And look at those numbers. Look at some of those numbers. Yeah. 71% completion rate for a career. Did he clinch the Heisman last week, guys, with his performance against AM? You have to do it again tonight. He's got my vote. And Savage looking downfield. And he's got Sanu inside the 40 to the 38. Just about Sanu. I mean, here's a guy that did not play his senior year, came in and started out as a, as a safety. Coach Yano said he might be one of our best safeties, but you're looking at a true freshman that also has quarterback skills, but this is where he excels at wide receiver. Then you can put him in the backfield at the Wildcat. One thing they're trying to develop with Sanu at the Wildcat position is he can throw the football. Yeah. Now Coach Yano told us he can jack it 70 yards through the air. Now, I got to see that to believe it, but he can do it. And if he can develop a throwing game off this Wildcat, they become very dangerous and very difficult to defend. He'll run it here. West Virginia defends it well as Scooter Berry takes him down. Guys, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier because, Bob, I got, I got the sense that you feel Colt McCoy is the Heisman winner. And just based on your answer, Chris, you, you think that it's not definite yet? No, I don't think it's definite yet. And I think you got to look what Tebow does tonight in a big game. And how about Mark Ingram? Does he have a chance to come back in a big game to shine? Toby Gerhardt out at Stanford. The Keaton kid out at Houston. And so of course, it's not the whole body of work the whole yeah, season? Yeah, it's the whole body of work. Absolutely. It's just, it's just one game, huh? No, no. It's a whole body of work. And that's why Ingram was the front runner <laughs> up until two weeks ago. Heisman ceremony next Saturday on ESPN as Martinick tries to get outside and he's going to lose yardage. The first man there was Reed Williams. It'll bring up third down he's and long. He's got to stay inside. He's not going to outrun anybody to the corner. He's yeah, a big, you, powerful kid. You Stick it up inside and run somebody over. You mentioned the 3-3-5 three, three, that West Virginia plays defensively, and uh, those guys are quick. Those linebackers and the defensive backs are quick, and they can get out there and make that play. Back-to-back -back negative plays, and it's third down and 14. Tim Brown is not on the field. Explosive receiver for the Scarlet Knights. Savage stepping up and his pass nearly intercepted by Reed Williams. He was on the field there. I just couldn't see him. Hard to find. <laughs> Five feet, eight inches tall. He was the intended receiver. Take a look at the pass rush and the pass protection. Good, good protection for Savage all day long. That's a bad throw. He never saw. That's the problem of a freshman, a true freshman quarterback. He sees his receiver, but you got to look at the defenders. You know where your receiver's going. Look at the defenders that are in the area where you're throwing the ball. That time, the linebacker snuck, snuck over there, knocked it down. Delegana to punt, try to pin West Virginia deep. Brandon Hogan back for the Mountaineers. It's going to go into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. West Virginia leading Rutgers 7-3. Under five to play in the first quarter here in Piscataway. Back at Rutgers, West Virginia's offense back on the field. Leading the Scarlet Knights 7-3. West Virginia has dominated the series, winning 14 straight over the Scarlet Knights. First down from the 20, Brown to throw, and dumps it off to Arnett for a gain of about four. As we look back at our Liberty Mutual drive recap, the first drive of the game for West Virginia. Big run there by Jared Brown, totally fooled the Rutgers defense, and then Noel Devine taking it in for his 12th rushing touchdown. In fact, both teams scored on their first drive. Well, Rutgers had to settle for three as Devine gets to the outside. Look out, he's dangerous. And they catch up to him at the 42. Now, well, last week against Pittsburgh, Devine did that and went for 88 yards against Pittsburgh in the backyard brawl. Well, here's what Rutgers keeps doing. They keep slanting to one side. And Noel Devine is getting the ball deep enough in the backfield where he has the time because if the offensive line protect him to read the defense then uses great speed and burst to get outside not a lot of guys can run outside but he has the speed to get the corner and he'll hurt you when he gets that corner it's already fifth all time in west virginia in rushing and he's got another year he's a junior brown 
going to go deep. And he's got a strong arm as he finds Arnett inside the Rutgers 30. He put it over the linebacker's head perfectly to Arnett to the 26-yard line. I'm impressed with Jared Brown. He's hit a couple of uh, throws. Sets up in the pocket. Delivers it. Nice, easy throw down the middle. Just barely over the uh, linebacker, Bohannes. Good play for uh, West Virginia. And an end around to Sanders. And he's taken down to the 25-yard line. A lot of different guys will touch the football on offense for West Virginia, both as receivers and as runners. And that's what makes them so difficult to defend. And they, they're so good athletically at all their skill positions. A lot of times they overmatch any defense with their athletes. They're better just athlete for athlete. They're better than a lot of teams that they play. They've won four straight bowl games, including a pair of BCS games. They also beat Georgia Tech in the Gator Bowl in the last four years. So they've got it going on offense as Devine takes it to the 20. Do you, do you see that little move? Yeah, it was they, nice. They, usually you see a tight end shift or a, or a back shift. That time we had the left tackle, the left side lineman shift over to the right side and make it an unbalanced line to the right side. Now, if you're Rutgers, you got to be able to see that. And then that's where you slant everybody that way because I promise you the ball's going that way. And it did go that way. Play clock down to five as Brown finds Sanders. Good catch because the pass was a little behind him, but it's a first down for West Virginia. Zaire Kitchen on the coverage. Well, it starts with trust. And right there, the offensive line slid to the blitz where the pressure was coming. Watch the offensive line. They're all sliding that way. That's where the pressure's coming, which allows Jared Brown to stand tall in the pocket. And Jock Sanders, one of those little guys that can be an impact player in the NFL, in my opinion, we'll get into that later, does a great job of adjusting and catching the ball with his hands. He, he's 5'7", 175 pounds. Here's another little guy, Tavon Austin, and the true freshman at 5'9", 165 pounds, takes it to the five-yard line. Yet West Virginia also has guys like Wes Lyons that are <laughs> six feet eight inches tall that play <laughs> offense. And a wide receiver. Lyons is a six eight wide receiver. They have the big and the short of it. And they've got Brown throwing it, doing a very nice job starting off the ball game before the bad weather hits. Get to throw that ball early, guys. Let's go. There's Lyons at six feet eight in motion. They'll hand it off to Clark, the up back. And he has the first down, and he's down short of the goal line. Zaire Kitchen and Ryan D'Imperio team up on the tackle. It'll be first and goal. Yeah, you'll see the offensive line getting a good push, and there's something interesting about this Mountaineer offensive line that you will not see in many FBS schools. It was close enough to see, but they don't have one guy over 300 pounds. Now, how many offensive lines in, in, in an FBS school have guys over 300 pounds? Yeah, good point. West Virginia, zero, because of the tempo and the type of offense they run. And they can move. they got athletes on that offensive line. Clark over the top and in. Touchdown, West Virginia. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year for Clark. He's a redshirt freshman. You don't see this play enough, do you, Grease? Well, it's the big back. You know, we're talking about the little guys. We're talking about Sanders and Devine. That's Clark, the big back. He weighs 230. They give him. He's got a lot of touchdowns because he gets to run the ball inside the five-yard line. Bittenkurt for the point after. A nine-play, 80-yard drive that took four minutes and one second, culminating in a one-yard touchdown run by Ryan Clark. West Virginia, 14-3 lead. Back at Rutgers, 14-3. West Virginia on top. Well, the Mountaineers... Coming off a big win in the backyard brawl against Pittsburgh. 
You know, it's interesting. It was a, it's a great win. Bill Stewart went out to practice Tuesday and basically threw a nutty on his guys. They couldn't handle success, and so he he really jumped them and jumped them hard. Now, they went out, and we talked to him on Wednesday. They came out and did a good job on Wednesday, and what it's shown me is that he's taken control of his football team, and they've responded to his energy and his enthusiasm. And what did he tell us? He was going to have Don Nealon come out? Yeah, and Coach Nealon. He said, this is a championship fight. I want the coach there. LeGrand bumped it, then scooped it up as they kick it short again, and he's out across the 35-yard line. As mentioned, West Virginia coming off that huge win in the backyard brawl against Pitt. 102nd edition of the Backyard Brawl, tied at six. And I don't know if you can call it revenge from two years ago, but it certainly feels good. That one two years ago when West Virginia lost at home to Pitt as Sanu drops the pass incomplete. West Virginia had cost them a national championship perhaps as we go to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. Dave, the Conference USA Championship game, Houston and East Carolina with this pass that Case Keenum almost had intercepted, but squeezes it in there, James Cleveland. Keenum becomes just the second quarterback to have 5,000 yards passing in a season. Twice. That made it 7 0, but on third and goal, Dominique Lindsay answers, and the Pirates have it tied late in the first it's on ESPN 2. I guess it's a good thing that game's not in Houston with the weather in Houston, although it's supposed to be decent today in Texas as Martinick takes it across the 40. Temperatures in the 50s in Houston, by the way, today. Third down coming up now. We close in on the final seconds here of the first quarter. I hear on the weather forecast last night that it was this is the first time ever that it snowed in Houston before it snowed in Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rain coming down harder here. Rutgers lost at Syracuse a couple weeks ago. Bounce back with a win over Louisville. And as we reach the end of the first quarter, trailing West Virginia, 14 to 3 at home as it continues to rain and the temperature continues to drop in Piscataway. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Here at Rutgers Stadium, the Scarlet Knights with the football trailing 14 3 as we start the second quarter. No penalties, no turnovers in that first quarter. A couple of good drives, though, by West Virginia's offense. Big third down here, Dave. Need to convert. Got to keep that Mountaineer offense on the sideline as Savage spins out of a would-be sack and then took a page out of a book that Mark Sanchez has been studying but not practicing <laughs> as he stumbles to the 40-yard line. Rutgers will have to punt. Yeah, 38-yard line got him. You look at Savage, and he's a good runner. He's mobile. He moves around. And sometimes when you're not used to being a runner, Bob, your your mind gets ahead of your well, feet a little bit. And, he was and, throwing his getting ready to throw his move out there. And he's and like we've been saying, he's he's inexperienced. You know, what is it? He's got lots of talent, lots of upside, but he's inexperienced. He hasn't been through a lot of this at this level. He only came in in, in the summer. He didn't he, he wasn't here in the spring, didn't go through spring practice with him. But he's been pretty efficient this year. Only four interceptions thrown by Savage. Delagana, punting. Jock Sanders will field it at the 20-yard line. And gets stood up at the 26 as we check in with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, the game will decide the Big East Championship. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh scored on Deion Lewis run. And then Isaiah Peed weaving his way through Panther defenders and setting up that quick strike Cincinnati offense while Pittsburgh churned up the clock on its drive. Cincinnati, a couple of explosive plays, and then Jacob Ramsey finishing it off. 7-7, they're going to the second quarter. Deion Lewis already with 75 yards rushing. All right, Reese here, it's 14-3, West Virginia. And Noel Devine hit in the backfield and cut down by Joe LaFedge. The running games are going to be important here today, and it's going to be important over in Pittsburgh where Cincinnati is playing. Pete making that big play down the field for Cincinnati. See Joe LaFedge, your safety, playing linebacker. And all 
he does is his speed and mismatch on the offensive lineman. Capers can't get to him. LaFed just shoots the gap and a good open field tackle on a slippery guy in Noel Devine. Sanders in the backfield now with Jared Brown. And looked like a intentional bounce pass. Incomplete. <laughs> Trying to, he's trying to bounce it off the no, turf no, and he, just slip out of his hand. He was going to throw it. He saw the defender there, and he tried to grab the ball, and it just came out of his hand. And it looked but like it, initially he was intending to do that, but I have to imagine with the rain that it slipped out. <laughs> well, he sees the defender, and he tries to stop, and the ball just comes out. You know, you have to have been a quarterback to have been there and done that before, but that's what you see the red shirt right there on Sanders. Third down and 13. It was the right, as it turned out, it was the right thing to do. And that pass is low and incomplete as Rutgers finally stops the Mountaineers and forces a punt. Sanders was the intended receiver, David Rowe, on the coverage. That's the kind of response you want on a Scarlet Knight defense. Getting a three and out, and it all starts with stopping the run on first down and put them in the third and 13. And as Bob always tells me, there's not a lot of plays for third and 13. Coach Shula used to say on the sideline, anything longer than third and 13, 14, he says, you got us into this mess, you get us out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had taken a sack or something, you know. Throw the ball away, Grease, come yeah. on. I know. I... <laughs> Kozlowski to punt. Devin McCourty, number 21 in red, dangerous, says Sanu's going to let that one roll inside the 30. McCourty's got seven career block kicks and got close earlier in the game as the wind continues to push that football down to the 15. We'll see what Tom Savage can do when he gets back under center for Rutgers when the Knights come back on the field. Welcome back to Rainy Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights down by 11. Early second quarter. See if that rain turns to snow by the end of the game. Sanu in at quarterback on first down. And trying to find a hole instead finds the arms of Julian Miller. No game. Join Reese, Mark Lou, and Jesse Palmer tomorrow night for the Bowl Selection Special. The matchup of all 34 bowl games will be announced and dissected by the analysts. The bowl selection special powered by Chevy Silverado on ESPN tomorrow, 8 Eastern. Meanwhile, the right guard, Howard Barbieri, shaken up for Rutgers. We may know before then where West Virginia and Rutgers are headed. Both will be going bowling with uh, at least eight wins apiece. A lot of people feel it's a done deal that West Virginia is going to the Gator Bowl regardless of what happens in that Cincinnati Pittsburgh game. Let's check in now with Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh back and forth they go while Deion Lewis has controlled things on the ground. Old Bill Stahl can pitch it around and look at this spectacular catch from Jonathan Baldwin. You see him saying incomplete, no waving it. That's why we have instant replay. Ball caught, foot down, touchdown Panthers. 14-7, Pitt has the lead in the second. Already three touchdowns combined scored in that game. Some thought that might be like a 13-10 final. The thing with Cincinnati, and, and obviously their offense, and they're well coached uh, with Brian Kelly on both sides, but their defense, as we saw last week when we did Illinois and Cincinnati, their defense has holes in it. In Pittsburgh, the, the, that type of weather is suited for what Dave wants to, <laughs> wants to do. And Deion Lewis, I mean, Deion Lewis is a beast for a true, for a, a real beast. Then you had Baldwin into the mix. They're potent on offense. Well, Pitt has, has turned out players under Dave Wanstead. And you look at uh, Darrell Reavers starring for the New York Jets, first-round pick. Sean McCoy, what he's doing as a rookie. The wide receiver, you guys, Fitzgerald Fitzgerald, out there. although he was uh, prior to, uh, to Wanstead. But Pitt has uh, turned out a lot of good players the last decade, no question. Lewis uh, ahead of Noel Devine in terms of rushing in the Big East. As here's Tim Brown. On the end around, and he gets bumped out by Reed Williams at the 16. So not much there on that play. 
Well, I like the call. I mean, Tim Brown's a playmaker. He's explosive. He's got a little gimp. You see that little hop in his giddy up right there. That's that angle, but he's a tough kid that's going to play, Grease. And, and Rutgers is struggling for offense now. You see him go to the uh, Wildcat on second down. Uh, they re run in reverse. They, they just need some offense, and that's what happens a lot of times when you play a true freshman quarterback. You know, it's that, you know, you're just going to struggle. Here's Savage, and he threw a strike, but it was dropped by Julian Hayes at the 30-yard line. That's the plays they're going to have to make, obviously, to hang with West Virginia. But I just want to go back. When you're going with Savage, you've got a true freshman quarterback. Then you have the Wildcat in Sanu. Obviously, that's a weapon for him. Aren't you in danger of getting Savage out of rhythm? He's in rhythm on this throw, and this is a play that you have to make. But just the overall philosophy of having a quarterback not take every snap and have the ball in his hands. No, I don't I don't think so. Okay. Uh, you know, he, he's young and he, you know, he could judge and he's not out of it for like more than one or two plays. And he's not out of the game. He's always lined up at flanker. Delegano to punt again. And short kick. Sanders going to let it bounce in midfield. And West Virginia will have excellent field position at its own 49 yard line. When we come back, College football brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry, with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores and Subway restaurants. Watch this week's Subway Fresh Take video for a refreshing look at sports. Go to ESPN.com. Search Fresh Take. Jimmy V week on ESPN and Jim Valvano played basketball at Rutgers, a 1967 graduate. He was inducted into the school's Basketball Hall of Fame back in 1993. And West Virginia gives it to Clark on first down and he plows forward for about five yards. Well, you can help us beat cancer. The V Foundation will proudly award 100% of your donation directly to fund cancer research. So log on to JimmyV.org or call 1 800 4 Jimmy V to donate. The women's and men's Jimmy V Classic set for Monday and Tuesday. Wrap up a Jimmy V week on the ESPN family of networks. Another handoff. Divine hit at the point of attack by Boharness and brought down. I like with the, Rut the Rutgers adjustment right here to West Virginia. West Virginia was hurting on outside run, so what Rutgers started to do is bring their pressure from the outside, kind of forcing Noel Devine to hit it back inside. But you still got to be stout in the middle, but it's a good adjustment by Greg Schiano and his defensive staff. They could use a stop here. West Virginia moving it easily in Rutgers for the most part today. And great starting field position. Here they come. Brown going to go deep, got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Arnett had it broken up by Devin McCourty. Great play by the senior playing on senior day. This is just a little pressure. Everybody's coming up front. You got one man-to-man -man coverage. McCourty sees when the receiver looks back, he looks back and knocks it away. And what, you see that right arm? You see that right arm split the arm of the receivers? That's a well-trained corner right there. Getting that right arm up in there between the arms of the wide receiver his outstanding yeah. effort sorry Chris his twin brother Jason playing in the NFL with the Titans Devin will be in the NFL next year no question Sanu back to receive the punt from Kozlowski and it will go into the end zone and so Rutgers will start this drive at the 20 well guys as mentioned it's uh, Jimmy V week and, and both of your families have been impacted by uh, the deadly disease of cancer and both of you know how important cancer research is. Well, uh, you're right. Uh, it's impacted both of us. And, you know, I knew Jimmy a little bit, and I know his brother, Nick Valvano. And Nick uh, has been so gracious to uh, to uh, 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 
I'm with the, the Moffitt Cancer Foundation in uh, in Tampa, and uh, they're a research hospital that has done great things for research. And they have uh, some of this money that they're raising and raising today. In the past, I think two and a half million dollars uh, Nick Valvano has given for mm -hmm. cancer research. So it's it's a great thing, and cancer is uh, a big part of the Moffitt uh, Hospital. Jim's other brother, Bob Valvano, also heavily involved. And a full start going to be the call here. Number 10, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, guys, I, I know this, and I just recently lost my wife uh, to breast cancer, but research gave her years that she would not have had. The answer is in God's grace and research. If we can put those things together in the goodness of, of your giving and the help that you can give us, you're going to impact a lot of families' lives. It's going to keep loved ones long, longer than they're supposed to be. And also, research is the key to a cure. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Well said, Spiels, as Reed Williams takes down the quarterback, Tom Savage, back inside his five-yard line. That's the blitz right here. If you see number 47, Reed Williams in the middle of your screen coming in on a blitz. And I'll tell you, as a linebacker, <laughs> they was how untouched. come that never happened to he me? He was untouched. That <laughs> never happened to me where I get to run through and nobody touches me. I get to tackle the quarterback. I, already, I had 350-pound I guys I mean, they shoving make that their play. claws he through my nobody, Adams' ass. Nobody touched him. The lineman didn't touch him. A def uh, offensive back didn't touch him. You should make that play. So we went from no mistakes to now back-to-back -back penalty and sack. There was nothing before that, and then Savage throws incomplete and would not have had a first down anyway intended for Graves. And so West Virginia is going to get it back here. He's a little rattled, thrown out of his own end zone, been sacked, backed up, and all that other stuff. Check that third down at 25. Yeah. So here's what you do if you're West Virginia. I'll I, I come with a blitz again, believe yeah. it or not. Well, Third and 25, because I'm going to play the yeah. odds that Rutgers is going to run a draw well, or a little screen. I come with blitz and put no. pressure on him and right now. And offensively, I'm thinking, all right, young quarterback, don't make a mistake. Back here, backed up inside your five-yard line. Don't make a mistake. It's okay to punt from here. And that's bizarro thinking if you come with a blitz, and obviously they're not thinking like I am. And Sanu dropped immediately as Scooter Berry Got a few, that play. a few boos here, but that was a good play. You throw it outside, you give them a chance to make a play. It's something safe, and if and if you can't make the play, punt it away. Yeah, Big Scooter did a good job of recognizing a short step of the offensive tackle, retracing his steps and chasing that down from behind. Delegano going to have to punt from deep in his own end zone, but at least he's uh, warmed up. He's been punting a lot already here in the first half. Into the wind, so you play the field position game. Don't go for the block. And Sanders at his 45, finds a hole, and will get to the 44 of Rutgers before he's planted by Jim Dumont. Now, the mission of 2009 Jimmy V Week is to uh, drive awareness for cancer research, and in the last two years, Jimmy V Week has raised more than 1.4 million dollars and again and it needs to be reiterated that 100 percent of your donations all donations go directly to cancer research 1-800-4 jimmy v or go to jimmy v.org you know one of the great things that they're doing now in cancer research is genetic profiling and and it's just the more money the more they can do some research the better it's going to get noel divine going to lose a handful as Bo Harness, the outstanding true freshman linebacker that Greg Schiano is so high on, from Saddlebrook, New Jersey, led the charge. The other thing that helps is as a defensive line, if you get penetration and the outside pressure led by Jonathan Freeney at defensive end was able to turn that inside to allow the pursuit to come get Noel. Brown over the middle, and Sanders able to wiggle out of a couple tackles and get to the 37-yard line. Was West, West Virginia's had their way pretty much the entire first half. And if, if, this, if this is going to turn around, a Scarlet Knight on defense or on special teams is going to have to make a play. The offense needs a jump start, and the defense can give them that. Rutgers called timeout before the snap. So West Virginia will have the football inside Rutgers' 40-yard line with a third down and short when we come back. Championship weekend continues tonight with the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship as Jonathan Dwyer and Georgia Tech take on C.J. Spiller and Clemson. Should be a good one. 80 Eastern on ESPN tonight. 
winner goes to a BCS game and that could impact what happens with Florida State there's been talk of a West Virginia Florida State Gator Bowl since Bobby Bowden coached at West Virginia before he took over the Seminoles here's Clark on third and short fighting for extra yardage ball came out but he's ruled down and he did not get the first out what a great job by Munoz the senior from Miami Florida playing his last game for the Scarlet Knights big third and short sticking his nose up in there getting a good read on the pulling guard see the little step right there shooting that gap untouched because the front four and the front five are doing their job leaving him free to come in and take down the big man Southridge Clark. Southridge High School in Miami they're going for it on fourth down and two it'll be Clark again no way Rutgers defense holds up Bull harness and David Rowe there for Scarlet Knights. This could be the spark that the offense for Scarlet for the Scarlet Knights need. The defense comes up, makes a big play, get real good field position. Boy, I tell you, if you're Bill Stewart, you say, man, I just ran that play. He's going the other way on a little lead. If I had a little play action off of that, because they were all stacking the line, I don't think I could have popped one. <laughs> but again, by Boharnas coming underneath the block, not giving one for one. What I mean for that is take on a blocker, defeat him, but don't quit. Go get the tackle. And Bill Stewart said, man, I should have called the play action. You're right, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Again. What a good shot. Not again. <laughs> yeah. Run play on first down, Martinick, and a flag down in the backfield, right in the area of holding. Gain of one, Keith Tandy made the tackle, but a penalty. Holding, offense, number 19, 10-yard penalty. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, guys, Conference USA Championship game, the nation's highest scoring team, the Houston Cougars on the move. Case Keenum, James Cleveland, he's over 100 yards receiving, his second touchdown catch. Extra point failed, and East Carolina just intercepted a pass in the end zone. It's 13-7 on ESPN2. All right, Reese here. It's 14-3, West Virginia leading, and Rutgers now with a first and 20. They're going to split Savage out and bring in Sanu as the quarterback. In the Wildcat, this has not really worked yet today. Uh, Sanu makes a good play there, though, getting out of an ankle tackle and gets to the 35-yard line brought down by Nate Sowers. All right, Bob has now given me my card back uh, so I can read the uh, Affleck <laughs> trivia question. All right, guys, four FBS teams have the opportunity to win 14 games. Which are the only two teams in history to win 14? Okay. Think about that one. It would have to be uh, one in a conference that has a championship game. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You guys are thinking, huh? Deep in thought are the analysts as the pass is caught by Sanu and a good open field tackle by Keith Tandy. Coming off a career high 10 tackles and an interception in the backyard brawl with Pitt. It'll bring up third down. Well, it had to be one of those years, right, where you're allowed 13 games. Wasn't there a year where you're allowed 13 games? And I, and I believe, you know, you get an extra game if you play Hawaii. So we'll get it. Well, we're just throwing all that out. All I know is one of the teams was this decade. It happened this decade, early in the decade. I know that one, I think, David. Mm -hmm. Come pretty close to home. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Savage on third and seven, flushed out and sacked inside the 30-yard line. Zach Cooper got him and forces another punt. Well, it's we, we talked about Rutgers getting an opportunity and, and the West Virginia defense, which came in ranked 29th in the nation in scoring defense, just won't let anything get past the line of scrimmage just just good play defensively and Haslam lost hand control on Cooper had a good initial stop on him but Cooper hit him with a quick inside move on that just keep your hands inside and Cooper good job of finishing the play once he beats his blocker Delegana punting for the 50th time here in the first yeah. half Sanders under it. Oh boy, he gets tattooed at the 34 as we check him with Reese Davis again. Game it will decide the Big East. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Panthers with a 14-10 lead. A little throwback special. Bill Stull 
Jonathan Baldwin, oh, look at the savvy move to create a little separation. Second touchdown catch, and the Panthers up 21-10 on ABC. And guys, if Pittsburgh wins and knocks off Cincinnati, does that change things for Brian Kelly and where, where, where he might be next year? Well, I think he's going to be at Notre Dame regardless okay. <laughs> if they win or okay. lose. All right. It's just whether he gets there sooner than rather than later. Brown throws incomplete intended for Austin. So you think even if Cincinnati wins, he's going to Notre Dame. Does that mean he coaches in the ball game? If Cincinnati wins, I mean, doesn't that play a role in his decision? If Cincinnati loses, he'd probably be in South Bend tomorrow night. But I'm saying if they win. If they win, then I think Notre Dame waits for him and lets Brian come when he wants to come. I think it's up to the University of Cincinnati. And they're going to have to step up. If, if they want to keep Brian Kelly, they have to step up, step up big time. Rutgers defense just did that, taking down Devine. Well, what they're doing it, Dave, is their their defensive linemen are not two gapping. They're getting on the edge of the West Virginia offensive two linemen. Gapping. Two gapping. What do you mean by two gapping? Two gapping. They're not hitting inside. They're getting penetration up the field. They're only working half a man, and there's nowhere to run. They're taking away all running lanes, especially on the outside. No first downs yet for either team this quarter, and West Virginia is not going to get one here. Brown sacked at the 25. Alex Silvestro. Well, harness back there as well for Rutgers. The defense for Rutgers is coming alive the last two possessions. Here you see a little blitz. Bohannes, number 42, gets right in there. You know, Brown's got to be careful. When he runs, and he, that ball is out away from his body, the quarterback. And then, you know, you're going to knock the ball loose. you got to protect the football. Courtney right here. Keep your eye on him. And the 40 blocked. As, uh, the kick is short. Sanu fields it at the 36. Fair caught. So Rutgers will take it there. All right. The answer to the Affleck trivia question. We're the only two teams in history to win 14 games. And there's four teams this year that have the opportunity to do so. He mentioned one was earlier this decade. That would be Ohio State. Surprised it took Spielman more than 30 seconds oh, to answer no, that one. I had that. I just want to give it to uh, you guys. Uh, and BYU was the other team in 1996. Hawaii. Yeah. And Boise State can win 14 this year. Plays in the WAC, so plays Hawaii. Yeah. And the SEC champion yeah. could win 14. Texas could as well. Uh -huh. Sanu. And it, they've done a pretty good job on that for West Virginia. Well, Josh Taylor was there for the Mountaineers, stringing the play out. And this is where they got to have you got to have your throwing game off it. Now, I just, if uh, I'm a defensive guy by nature, so if I'm West Virginia, I'm thinking, man, Sanu, Sanu, Sanu. Guys, I'm telling you, watch him. He's going to throw the ball, and I promise you he's going to throw the ball before this game is over. At least that's what my instincts are telling me. Well, they got to do something. They've had the ball. They've had uh, five possessions. The first one was a field goal, and the next four, they punted the football after three and out on every, on every possession. How about minus six rushing yards? As, again, the pass gets away from Savage. Too high intended for Sanu, who is in double coverage. Well, celebrating its fifth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. For each field goal and extra point kick to date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.1 million in scholarship monies. Well, Savage has passed attempts second and ten and third and ten, Bob. That puts a little more pressure on him when you go to that wildcat formation and limit hate him from being a threat on throwing the ball on first down. Virginia sending two linebackers on a blitz here on third down. One of them's going to take down Savage. It's Reed Williams. There's a penalty flag down as well. They brought Williams and Thomas up the middle, and Williams brought down the quarterback. In their loss to Syracuse a couple of weeks ago, Rutgers had nine sacks, and a couple of them were the quarterback's fault, and most of them were because they were blitzing a lot. That was against Syracuse. As uh, let's see whether West Virginia declines First it or not. Foul. No. Chop block. Offense. Number 38. And it will be declined. Third down. We we'll see the chop block here from Martinick, which a player on West Virginia will be engaged. And Martinick comes in and cuts him. Good call. Now, uh, I don't know if he was engaged, to be honest with you. He wasn't. Look at Blazik was trying to reach in, and his hand just caught. 
Do you think the West Virginia blocked? defender, he wasn't blocking the player. He wasn't blocking him. Martinick comes in and does his job on a blitzer. He's going to take the guy's knees. That's what he's coached to do. And I think Blazik was just working his way with his man who was running a stunt. I mean, it's a, it's a good call, but it wasn't certainly, it wasn't intentional. So fourth down, while we have a moment, let's go to the studio and check in with Reese. All right, guys, coming up on the Bud Light Halftime Report, we'll break down what is serving as the Big East Championship game. Pittsburgh has been very physical. They are controlling play against Cincinnati right now. We'll break it down for you. Also, look ahead to the matchup between number one and number two, Florida and Alabama, coming up in the SEC Championship game. Conference USA title game has been a back-and-forth wild affair. Mark and Lou are here and ready to go on Championship Saturday, Dave. All right, Reese, so why don't you guys get in here your thoughts on Florida, Alabama while we have a moment? Well, I, I, I think it's going to be a great game. I, I think it's going to be a defensive game, and I, um, I, I, I still like Tim Tebow. When it gets down to, 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 to uh, the tough in fourth quarter, I just think he wills his players to go on out there and win one way or the other. Delegano's punt is short, and again, it isn't really helpful with uh, the bounce inside the 40 yard line of the 37 it was better than the last one which went straight out of bounds. And some of the BCS storylines Cincinnati and Boise State seeking regular season perfection Bearcats down 24 to 10 right now to pit. Florida Alabama in the SEC championship will get Chris's thoughts in a minute on that what he thinks about that game also Texas Nebraska for the Big 12 championship tonight. What uh, Lane Kiffin said he Alabama has good coaches and Florida has good players, so that that gets a little sassy from him still going on. Are you shocked by that comment? Uh, Brown dumping it off to Sanders over the middle. Gain of seven. Well, I think they're both well-coached teams, and obviously they have good players, but uh, to me, I, I, I like Alabama. Again, and I can't tell you why. I just like them in this game. Brown finds six-foot-eight-inch Wes Lyons, a first down catch. West Virginia has one timeout remaining. Clock will stop as they reset the ball. What a luxury to have 6-8 on a third and five on a slant. Oh, yeah. Just throw it up there and let him go get it. And Rutgers called a timeout. I think they had 12 guys they on the did. field because a couple Munoz, flags came yeah, in. Yeah, Munoz was trying to get off the field. But I think they called the timeout first. So, uh... There is no foul for delay of game. Rutgers called second charge timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. All right, so 147 remaining here in the half. Uh, what about the Big 12 championship tonight, which will be on uh, our air? Does uh, Nebraska have a shot with its defense? Can Indomitian Sue make that much of a difference? It's tough for a defensive tackle to have that <laughs> much of an impact. I mean, he can make a difference, but he can't cover the pass. Uh -huh. And Cole McCoy, and, and if Bo Pelini can dial something up, and Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator out at Nebraska, can score some type of points, then their defense is certainly enough uh, to give them a shot at winning. I, I think Bo Pelini can make it interesting and difficult for Texas for a while but in the long haul it, Texas has just got too much Wait, didn't you say that a, a defensive tackle once uh, gave you a Pro Bowl year yeah but I'm a linebacker <laughs> well, also is he gonna help out yeah, the rest of the defense? you're not gonna win a big 12 championship with one defensive tackle <laughs> he loved those defensive <laughs> linemen keep the uh, keep the blockers off of him well and Dominican Sue is uh, 100 pounds lighter than Ted Washington who played in front of you as Brown try to Hit Lions over the middle, broken up by Devin McCourty. Bring up second down. We were talking with an NFL executive up here in, in Rutgers about Devin McCourty. He's, a, he's an outstanding corner. We were watching him work in pregame. He has outstanding feet. And he gets a really good jump on the football when it's in the air. No wasted steps. Right there, matching up one-on-one -on -one with Big West Lions down here at the bottom of the screen. He's a leading tackler for Rutgers. As Brown. Going to throw at McCourty, and Lyons had it and then lost it, and it's ruled incomplete. He did not complete the catch. <laughs> he doesn't panic, and he understands. You know, you watch, he does a good job. He's positioned. He knows he can run with Lyons, but look how his hands, he understands where that football is, and once that ball's in the air, if he sees the receiver catch it, he doesn't panic. He goes to his coaching points and attacks the arms and the hands of the wide receiver. Did he have possession there, guys? No. He may have had possession. 
And then when he brought it down where McCourty could get at it, he knocked it out of bounds. Looks like they're going to spend a little bit more time looking at this play. He I don't know. He, he looked like he had possession, meaning his feet were down and he had control of the yes, ball. And I then agree. McCourty came in and knocked it out. Yeah. Following plays on the further review. Well, let's take a look. I was just so in love with the technique that yeah, McCourty was the doing. Defensive guy. I didn't even pay attention to the possession. Is that important? Uh, 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 watch this. Let's see. Take a look. Ball. He's got the ball. Two. Two feet. Mm. Got to be indisputable yeah. video evidence to overturn the ruling on the field, which is incomplete. But look at the hand. Just going up and attacking the arms and yeah. the hands. He had, He's got it to me. Had possession yeah. with one foot inbound, which all you need in college. I mean, he, he had both feet down in possession. And three feet in bounds Boy, six. before it came out. And the, and, and the difference is that would be a first down for West Virginia. Yep. But that 6-8 is such an advantage going back to Harold Carmichael, the Philadelphia Eagles. But at 6-8, West Lions. Mm. I mean, does or do both guys have possession? So no. is that pos possession is established? I know it goes to offense. It looks like he has possession. And he yanks the ball out. Now is that indisputable depending on what the call? The ruling is confirmed on the field. The receiver never maintained possession of the ball while in bounds. Well, they were pretty quick. A minute and 13 seconds yeah. they feel. I mean, they said it confirmed. Sometimes they'll just say the ruling on the field stands when it's not confirmed. But they feel that video evidence actually confirmed that it was incomplete. Now, it, it looked to all of us that he had possession. But there must have been some doubt. You know, some doubt in in the officials mind that was looking and made it has to make the decision as to whether or not he had it wasn't it wasn't indisputable vision, yeah, right. video evidence. I changed my mind. He didn't have possession. Good job. <laughs> <before him. laughs> play clock at two. They get the play off, but Brown wishes they did sack back at the 40 yard line by Jonathan Freeney. The last few series, the, the uh, Scarlet Knights defense has been coming alive. See, they're bringing blitzers, they're bringing safeties and linebackers, and what you have on the corner is Freeney beating Barclay. And watch Freeney on the get off. Outstanding get off. You see him get on his edge, and he throws that nice little dip that shoulder and throw that left uppercut and come in with the finish. Eight and a half sacks. Sorry, Chris. I'm not coming after you. <laughs> Eight and a half sacks for Freeney. He had one his first two years. He's a junior from Tampa. The speed on that edge. I mean, that that puts fear in offensive line. I'm not fear. I'm escape. I'm afraid. But it just makes you so weary. The homeboy over here getting a little excited. You know, he's <laughs> putting that arm over. I'm coming over near you, Dave. I, I love to see that technique. And we saw McCourty use technique as a defensive back. The ball in the air, not panicking, and he attacks the hands of the wide receiver without panicking right there you see Freeney coming off the edge like his namesake he gets down low he dips that shoulder and you throw, see him throw the uppercut and it's very difficult for an offensive lineman to be able to do that all right guys Just Rutgers defend that. has one timeout 54 seconds left you got a true freshman quarterback in Tom Savage who has struggled today Rutgers offensively as a unit has struggled do you uh just take depends a knee or two and, and, and depends, go into the locker room? Depends or? on the field position, okay. what you get here. Uh, and then secondly, sometimes in a two-minute situation, things change. I mean, your offense hasn't done anything the first quarter, and then you get in a two-minute offense, a hurry-up thing, and, and and I've seen move them down the field and get three points or seven points. Well, you got McCourty that West Virginia has to account for. Three blocks on the year. You see the total yards, by the way? Two for West Virginia this quarter, and minus 13 for Rutgers this quarter. For the half, Rutgers is 46 yards. There's McCourty. Seven career block kicks for McCourty, three this year. High snap. They're setting up the return, though. Sanu inside his 20. Brought down at the 23-yard line. Kent Richardson leading the way. So Rutgers will have 43 seconds and a timeout to work with. Here's what I do. You understand that West Virginia is going to probably start out in a little bit of a prevent defense. They're not going to be up in your face. You want to get your quarterback in a little bit of rhythm, you hit him with a couple three-step drops. If he completes the first one, then you go into your hurry-up offense. And that, that's what I do because they have the luxury 
usually teams the defenses will be a little bit soft in their coverage to start a drill with 43 seconds to go or, or something like a screen give an opportunity to one of your speed backs to get something doesn't look like it here though now going in the I formation Martinick will carry it get hit in the backfield he'll bring a couple tackles though and pushed out after he got the first down. Maybe this will change what Rutgers will do as he got 12 yards. Yeah, you have to go now. I mean, you have to do something. They'll reset the ball and then wind the clock. We'll see what Greg Schiano decides to do. Boy, I, I just think you, you, you go ahead and take a shot. Run it again to Martinick. What that tells me is, is Rutgers just wants to get in. To tells the fans that too, right? They just want to get in halftime. They, you know, you have a freshman quarterback who has not played well the first half. They don't want to drop the ball or throw an interception that would make it worse than it is right now. Let's get in, talk about it, come back out, yeah. and go from there. West Virginia has won 14 straight in the series, seeking its ninth win this season. Looking to finish the Big East five and two. And perhaps go to the Gator Bowl leading Rutgers 14 three at halftime on a rainy Saturday in Piscataway. Let's go back to the cozy studios of ESPN Reese in the Bud Light halftime report. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. The rain has turned to snow in Piscataway. West Virginia leading Rutgers 14 to 3 at halftime. And we welcome you back to Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Valvano and his dream to defeat cancer. Well, how will the snow affect? The second half of this game, uh, Rutgers may have to start to run the ball, and they got one rushing yard in the first half. Well, let me say this. I would not want to be a quarterback in these conditions. It is wet, it is cold, and it is windy, and that is the worst conditions for a quarterback to try and throw a football. Well, and then you see, okay, well, Rutgers has the luxury of going to their Wildcat with Muhammad Sanu and how they can do that, and, and will that affect their ability to run the football would help them. And also, I still believe Sanu's going to throw a pass before the game's <laughs> over. I hope. I've got to believe he's going to throw a pass. <laughs> I know it's in the game plan. Yes, he's got to be. And and if you're losing, and they're only losing 14 to three, it's not like they're losing, you know, 28 to nothing. You know, they're only down 11 points, but their offense hasn't looked good. But they could come out and, and light it up here in the second half and, and make a game of it. And about their defense did a better job in the second quarter against West Virginia. The Mountaineers scored on their first two possessions. Yeah. That's, and, that's, uh, that was a defense a defensive graphic if you ever saw one. Not much offense. In fact, the team scored on their on the first possession. Both teams scored was seven to three, and then on the third possession, West Virginia scored another touchdown, and that has been it. The rest of the way have been punts. West Virginia has not kicked it deep, and again, they're going to kick it short. And this one will go out of bounds. So very good starting field position for Rutgers. We talked to Bill Stewart about that, and he told us that his kickoff coverage is. It's not very good. It hasn't been very good. I said, what's the problem? Well, we don't kick it deep and we don't kick it high. So it's tough to be good on kickoff coverage if you don't do those two things. Looked like it was touched by Eric Legrand of Rutgers. Before it went out of bounds. That's what they're trying to sort out. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. The spot with the ball went out of bounds. First down. No, LeGrand yeah. did not touch it. I think Unless it, it hit a Rutgers player uh, on the kick. He says 40 yard line, and he says, no, if it goes out past the 40 yard line, you take it where you get it. Well, you get the five yard penalty, and it was short of the 40, so they tack on the five and right. then get it out of the 42. 
You know, Tom Savage struggled in the first half, six of 13 passing for 72 yards. They have a short memory. Your quarterback come out and play well this time. Hand it off to Martinick on first down, and that's one of their better runs of the day, and it only got about three yards. Here's the uh, kickoff again. Let's see if it hits a Rutgers player. It looked like it hit, may have hit his foot. Which kicked it left because they're trying to squib kick it down the middle. So to me, it looked like it hit the foot of the Rutgers front lineman. Kicked the ball left and went out of bounds. Play on. Sanu in a quarterback. He's going to run it. And Sanu into the secondary. And brought down from behind at the 41. But an excellent play. Hogan and Glover downfield made the tackle. 13 yards for Sanu. 19. Glover gets a key block here. Greece is kind of just a little counter look. And you see there's one pooler. There's two poolers. Corcoran comes in and takes care of JT Thomas. And Sanu using his... Ability he's trying to throw the left jab there at the end Soraka the offensive coordinator Comes out in the second half finds out what what West Virginia is doing defensively. What can we run against it? These are the best plays Coming out in the second half right here. That was their longest run of the day 13 yards Martinick on first down trying to splatter the pile And he moves it all the way to the 36 yard line Dave I always enjoyed Going in at halftime, especially if we were struggling. If we, if we were scoring a lot of points, heck, everything was working. But when you're struggling, you go in, you listen to your coaches. This is what they're doing. This is what we're going to do the second half. When you come out in the second half and you run those plays, and the first drive of the third quarter is the biggest, the most important, because if you've made adjustments and they work, your confidence is going back up. That five yards, thanks to the hard running by Martinick. Tight ends here. They'll keep it on the ground. Martinick finds him. Inside the 30 and brought down at the 29. We well, have to have the ability, if you want to be a solid running back, to make the eighth man in a box miss. Watch Robert Sands, number two, come into your screen and watch what Martinick does. Instead of trying to run him away, he throws a quick little move, and right there is the missed tackle of the on block player for the West Virginia defense because they know what Rutgers is doing. It's clear. Go in the locker room. Guys want to get tough and run the football down your throat. So West Virginia has adjusted, but you got to make tackles if you're an on block football player. And stands right there and missed the open field tackle on Martinick. This is a West Virginia defense that's given up a lot of points this year and a lot of yards. This to do from the quarterback position, running the Wildcat. Gets stood up. Williams uh, on the tackle. We were uh, talking to um, Shiano yesterday in his office, and we were asking him about this this Wildcat that that uh, that uh, Sanu runs a lot. And he said, you know, with your New Jersey connections and with the Dolphins running it, and with Bill Parcells and them running it down there, did, did, did you talk to anybody down there with the Dolphins about the Wildcat? He said, no, it's a fact. So we talked to Urban Meyer and the University of Florida. We went down there, and we're doing some of the stuff that they do. Gonna do it here. In fact, there's three other guys in the backfield with Sanu. And here's what Chris said. He called it a pass into the end zone, broken up. Triple coverage down there was intended for Brown. That's why you don't have your wide receivers throwing passes. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell Brown is struggling to even run back to the Rutgers sideline. Keith Tandy was covering him and knocked the ball away. Well, actually, let's see. He gets a good look and a good read. His mind's made up. Obviously, he's going to hit Brown on the post, and he does get behind the defense. But you can see at five foot eight, Tim Brown's not going to win any jump balls back there against three defenders. And West Virginia, well coached, read that play perfectly and defended it perfectly. Rutgers only one third down conversion of the first half, and Savage hit, and he gets out of there and unloads, and it's incomplete. Boy, if Tandy picked it off. He would have scored. Incomplete, it's fourth down and nine. There's a lot of good things there. Good pass rush on third down. You got to throw the football. And then Savage almost gets out of this. Good hard pass rush. He almost makes a play to continue the drive. And as you mentioned, Tandy almost picks it off. That's why he's a DB. 
because if you're that good of an athlete at West Virginia and you're that type of player, can't you're catch. playing wide receiver. <laughs> That's why he's playing DB. Can't catch. Here's San San T. It's a 45-yard field goal into the wind. And he's going to come up about five yards short. His long in his career is 50, so he's got the leg, but you can tell that got caught up in the wind. Rutgers, which has won eight straight November and December, struggling down 11. Make a donation at JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 100% of your donation will go directly to cancer research. And Jim Valvano played college basketball at Rutgers. He's a 1967 graduate. Played with uh, Bob Lloyd, All-American point guard in the backcourt. Running play by Devine gets about three out near the 30-yard line. There's Jimmy V on the right. Bob Lloyd is a backcourt mate. Look at the ups that uh, yeah. Jimmy V had there. He had over uh, 1,100 career points, and uh, Rutgers uh, finished third in the 1967 NIT. One picture in my mind of him I'll never forget is him running out at NC State, yeah. a national championship game when they won. Yep, looking for somebody to hug. Yeah. Jared Brown rolling out. Everybody covered. And it's incomplete. That's a missed opportunity. And Jared Brown has a lot of confidence in his arm and the throw on the run. Right there, it's lazy. His feet drifted a little bit. I thought Grease is a quarterback. He had time to set his feet. And when you throw that out, you want to throw it low to the outside, away from the defender, which allows the receiver to make a play on the ball, but also keeps his feet on the ground to come in inbounds when you catch the football. Check the weather, horse. It's cold, it's wet. Yeah, he still can set his feet. He threw a fadeaway. Did a Jimmy V fadeaway. Hey, we have to create. All you do is destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Brown to throw on third and six. And that one was low also. Flag down. Pass intended for Sanders right at the first down marker. This has got holding written all over it. Holding. Offense. Number 77. Penalty V decline. Fourth down. That's on uh, Josh Jenkins, the left guard. We always talk about offensive adjustments. What a nice job ever since the third series of the football game for Bob Fraser the co-defensive coordinator along with Greg Schiano the play caller to uh, adjust and to slow down this athletic West Virginia offense and Ed Pinkham also is uh, one of the co-defensive coordinators Bill Stewart in his second year he won the Fiesta Bowl as the interim coach when Rich Rodriguez left to go to Michigan now in his second full season, they went 9-4 a year ago and beat North Carolina in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. West Virginia likely headed to the Gator Bowl regardless of the outcome of this game. And regardless of the Cincinnati Pitt outcome, depending on who you talk to, is that was a deep kick and fielded inside the 20. Fair caught at the 16 by Sanu. We'll see what Rutgers can do in offense down 11 when we come back. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by GMC, we are professional grade, and Toshiba, leading innovation. Oh, you got to go to grease trucks when you're in New Jersey. Two campus favorites, you got the Fat Cat and the Fat Daryl. Chris had both at the same time in one <laughs> meal. And I think Fat Cat was on the left there. That's with the two cheeseburgers, french fries, lettuce, tomato, onions on a sub roll. Fat Daryl, of course, Chris, is chicken fingers, mozzarella sticks, fries, lettuce, tomato, and marinara sauce. Which one was better? Ledge would love both of them. I know that. That's a different show. Oh, okay. Martin on first down off the right side. And he'll get about two or three dragged down by Josh Taylor. I would think if you're Rutgers and offensively, you have to get Savage involved. And you have to get him throwing the football a little bit. And the best way, in my opinion, to get a quarterback in rhythm is to let him throw on first down. It'll let him hit some three-step drops. A uh, fake little flanker screen. Savage on the rollout and dumps it off incomplete. Let's check in with Reese. In Pasadena. All right, Reese here. It's third down and eight. Five minutes into the third quarter, and Savage throws it right to a West Virginia defender. Sidney Glover, touchdown Mountaineers. Touchdown. 
Second interception of the season for Glover. West Virginia leads the Big East with 16 picks as a team. 24 yards on the return by Glover. It's only the fifth thrown this year by Savage. And the first turnover of the game. Yeah, he just didn't see the... Uh, he didn't see Glover. He didn't see the defensive back. He was looking. He was staring down his receiver. Bittenkirk for the point after. And it's 21 to 3, West Virginia. What do you think Greg Schiano's telling Savage right there, Bob? I'm going to need you, big fella. Here's what you're going to see right here. He's staring down the receiver and Sidney Glover played the vertical route at first. He kind of baited him. He saw his eyes and he jumped the underneath route and he was able to finish the play. But Sidney Glover did a good job of coming late off the coverage and breaking on the football. The key to the whole thing, and here's Glover, is he's in a zone zone coverage. He's not man-to-man -man coverage. The guy, the slot guy right there that he jams, he's not covering him. Savage sees that jam and he throws to the outside guy and Glover just slides off to his own responsibility and just takes it off, picks it off. And he's thrown a two, true freshman, Mark Harrison, who I think drifted inside on that route. If you're going to run a hitch, you want to keep it outside for that exact reason, away from the guy that's coming late to the flat. And he threw the ball inside. It was doomed to start. It's a true freshman, a true freshman, you understand that. I mean, that's going to happen. You're going to drift a little on your routes. You're going to be late on a throw. Yeah. Our Saturday menu is brought to you by Applebee's on ABC at 3.30. USC and Arizona and a good Pac-10 game at 8 o'clock tonight on ABC. It's the Big 12 championship, ACC championship over on ESPN. Can Nebraska knock off Texas? And if that happens, will it be TCU or will we have Cincinnati for that matter if they come back to be pit against the Florida-Alabama winner or will we have a rematch hey, Florida-Alabama? Give a little credit to TCU. They've had a great year. I mean, he's, he's been down there and played well. Oh, it's just got to be TCU. I mean, they play people yeah. in their solid offense, defense. And don't know if that was a whiff by Bittenkert if the ball just blew off the tee as he went to kick it. <laughs> that ball fell off the tee, and he says, I'm not kicking this. He does this He does this in practice and does the same thing. He doesn't kick. He, if it blows off, <laughs> I'm not kicking it if it's falling off the tee. I'll tell you, he does a good job of keeping his composure. That's kind of like stopping your drive on a uh, <laughs> downswing. Yeah. When the driver in golf. Because he could have kicked it and swung his leg and missed everything and fell down and, and made the bloopers. <laughs> yeah, Snoopy pulling the ball away. Or Lucy or whoever did that. On I, don't, I don't think Snoopy did that. <laughs> Here's LaFedge on the return. Big return. The kicker to beat. He got it. LaFedge being chased. They won't catch him. Touchdown, Rutgers. Why do you kick it deep? Well, that's the spark that, uh, that Rutgers needed is somebody on special teams or defense to make a play. Well, Bill Stewart was telling us all week. We're not very good at kickoff coverage. And don't give them a chance to return it because this is what happens. Do what you've done all game. Squibble down there and let the big defensive line and field it at the 30. When you give LaFedge a shot and they execute, man, they make a play. You let them right back in it. And that, to me, that's on Coach Stewart. He had to know better than kick that deep because he was the one telling us how bad his, his kickoff yeah. coverage was. It's on the players for not executing, obviously. Rutgers going for two. Is a little early for this here, guys. I think you make it a 10 point game and you're struggling getting points so you get all the points while you have an opportunity to get points in my opinion how the game is going 91 yard kick return for a score so much for the old adage don't go for two unless it's the fourth quarter but they get it on the quarterback snake by Savage they had a good feeling coming into the ball game that that was going to be there two point play inside the five yard line you'll spread them from sideline to sideline go empty in the backfield and just run a quarterback draw Good patience right here by Savage of setting it up just enough to get those defense linemen upfield. You get um, Art Frost on Williams, Reed Williams, the middle linebacker, just an easy cut for a two yard run and two points. 
Well, you can join Reese Davis, Mark May, Lou Holtz, and Jesse Palmer tomorrow night for the Bowl Selection Special, powered by Chevy Silverado on ESPN at 8 Eastern. Players and coaches from around the country will join us with inside perspective as well. Find out who is going where and playing against whom. And the winner of that Pittsburgh East and Cincinnati game will go to the BCS game. And what we're being told is West Virginia going to go to the Gator Bowl, regardless of the outcome of that game. And the Meineke Car Care Bowl then could have Cincinnati or Pittsburgh if Pitt loses. Brute Sun Bowl and Rutgers uh, in the just, mix. And there's no rule say, in the Big East. They can take anybody they want. You just got out there just throwing out a bunch of names. No, no, no. I just did. Huh? Source is telling me West Virginia is going to the Gator Bowl. So. Regardless of the outcome of the games. Short kickoff taken at the 30-yard line is checking with Reese. Conference USA Championship game on ESPN2. Now coming out to start the second half. Oh, look at this. I think we're going to win. No, I beg to differ. I would say that we are going to win. Either that or somebody said something about somebody's mama. East Carolina then answer Patrick Pinkney, Dwayne Harris, and the Pirates have the lead. 21-19 early in the third. Skip Holtz and company getting it done. Well, so far, after no offense in the first half, still no offense in the second half, but we do have two touchdowns, one by the West Virginia defense and now by Rutgers special teams. Here's Noel Devine, and they bottle him up. He gets maybe two. Tommaso Munoz making the play, senior from Miami, Florida. And that kickoff return, Dave, by Rutgers, was the seventh non-offensive touchdown of the year for them. They've had four on defense and three on kick returns. So they've kind of helped their offense all season long. Because they're on balance look, they bring the big tackle over. And Devine able to get away from one defender. Actually get positive yardage. A couple mm -hmm. yards downfield. He's brought down by Silvestro and Bo Harness. Mm -hmm. like George Johnson had a shot for a TFL. Tackle for loss in the backfield. But the shifty Noel Devine gave him a leg and took it away. Nothing was there. This is where Jared Brown, your fifth year senior, the leader, needs to make a play. West Virginia just one of eight on third down. And Brown completes it to Lions. And no shot. Down at the 41 yard line, about four yards short of the first down. Billy Anderson on the coverage. And West Virginia <laughs> will punt the ball. Talk about a hands on coach. Right there. He doesn't call the defenses anymore. He gave his play calling duties up to uh, Bob Frazier this year. Frazier and Ed Pinkham, the co-defensive coordinator. You know, you, you, a lot of times when we come in, we talk to the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, and the head coach. Not here. At Rutgers, you talk to the boss. You talk to the big boss. Greg Schiano, and that's the only guy you talk to. He's got control. Kozlowski, with the wind behind him, hammers that one. And it'll go out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Greg Schiano trying to get his ninth win of this season. Got his team back within 10. Rain, then snow, then rain again. We'll likely have more snow here in Piscataway as the temperature, which was at 41, dropped below freezing. Now back up 36. And Rutgers starting to heat up, though, within 10. Backed up, though, to its 11, first and 10. Martinick hit from behind and gets just past the line of scrimmage. It was JT Thomas that was in the backfield and slowed him up. And this is really the, the second full game, I guess you could say third straight game, where they've had a full defense, although even against Cincinnati, they weren't completely healthy. But you can see how good this defense is when they've got all their guys out there. Yeah. And nine of these starters will be back next year off this defense. In fact, they'll have 17 starters. I think eight guys come back on offense and nine on defense. So they'll have to replace the quarterback. Yeah. But uh, other than that, West Virginia should be good. They've got a true freshman, Geno Smith. Also, Pat White's brother is uh, the third string quarterback, Colby White. Good play there by Glover dragging down DeAntoine Williams. Tom Savage has struggled throughout the game. 
This throw there, trying to hit his tight end Shamar Graves, and a tip pass. Here he trips over the 39 yard line, and then the pick six. Well, that's a young freshman, but the thing that Greg Shano loves about Tom Savage is his temperament. He never gets high, never gets too low, which is unusual for an 18 or 19 year old kid not to panic and just trust what you do, trust your training, and just play football. And that, that's a nice quality to have. And you're going to have days like this. Greg Shiano said Savage is special. He thinks he's going to be a great player. Here, he's going to get sacked. Back at the six yard line by Goldborn. Everybody covered downfield. And Rutgers will have to punt out of its end zone. Is that the fourth or fifth sack of Savage today? But every time you talk to Shiano, every time you talk to Shiano, he always has a smile on his face when you mention Tom Savage. And let me say this about this, guys. Two years from now, when you talk, when you come back here and we do a Sa uh, Tom Savage, a Rutgers game, he's going to be hot stuff. I'm, they're, they're in very good shape offensively quarterback around here for the next uh, three years. Well, if you guys love punting, this game is for you as you saw the punt yard so far as Sanders waits for it in midfield. Waits and trying to bounce it to the outside. Got a huge block down the sideline at the 40 and out of bounds at the 33. No flag down. Looks so like Ian Smith, number 24, is going to come up and get the block that you need. And very smart by getting his head in front and on the side of the defender from Rutgers, number 20, Green. Look at that, just smart, getting his way. And Jock Sanders showing patience to let that block set up and to burst down the sideline. That's a good call by the officials. Yeah, yeah, good. good Outstanding. Yeah. And very good field position for West Virginia inside the 35. Four sacks now, by the way, for West Virginia against Savage. Here's play action on first down. The wheel route out of the backfield. And it was Devine who was the intended receiver. Munoz covering incomplete. And oh, yeah. Ooh, Coach Stewart. I guess that's that's good. Is that good face mask or bad face mask? Now give him a hug. Yeah, there you go. That's good. He's close Stewart can get 15 for that. I mean, that was that was <laughs> blatant face mask. <laughs> Personal foul. And no incidental face mask in football. As Brown fumbles it, and Munoz hops on it for Rutgers. I mentioned earlier in the game, he carries that ball out away from his body, and there nobody even touched him. It just slipped out of his hand. Like he hurt his hand or thumb a little bit also he was grabbing his on the ground but they have a play they have a play set up it's the quarterback draw the same one used with Clark as your lead blocker and look at that there Clark has to run to get the people they're five yards away and you're right Greece he runs he runs with his arms out away from his body and you should tuck that elbow in next to your side and hold the football against your body it's a little Adrian Peterson running you notice when Adrian has trouble dropping the ball and putting it on the deck it's the same thing. He kind of cradles that ball within the form and gets loose and shows there. You got to get that ball high and tight, protect it. It's like a little baby, a little newborn. Protect that sucker. <laughs> You're Vikings, huh? Oh, yeah. And here's a little trickery. Savage after the pitch, going to throw it deep downfield into double coverage. And incomplete. Should have been picked off by Brandon Hogan. That looked like a punt. X wide receiver, thus the name X for Brandon Hogan. But they had two. West Virginia <laughs> defensive backs back there playing him, and it, it, you know they had pretty well good coverage. Go ahead and take a shot at it downfield. Well, I like the call. I think it's an aggressive yeah, call I too. I like. The it. only reason, just so people know out there, why I said Chris's Vikings is Chris's brother Rick Spielman, the GM of the Minnesota Vikings, are off to a ten and one start. Yeah, they played. And good. Chris played for Detroit in the same division. Yeah. So he used to hate the Vikings, and now <laughs> now Chris is saying, "Oh, our Vikings and right. we, <laughs> we and all this other stuff." He's finally starting to take my advice up there. <laughs> <laughs> Martin back in the backfield flag down. On, on so Martin back in the third. On personnel, yeah. on yeah. college football That's personnel, right. you That's give right. him the inside stu stuff. Yeah. Let's see, draft Adrian Peterson, draft yeah. Percy Harvin. Yeah. There you go. Real tough. Russell McFound. Defense. Number 12. Hands to the face. 15-yard penalty. Sours. First down. 
Wade Sauer is the guilty man. He's coming over to have a talk with Coach Stewart. I don't think he's coming over. He's no, trying no, to get away from it. Stand those numbers. You'll be all right. <laughs> That's why that's why coach Stewart never has a voice left at the end of the game right there. But a wonderful guy. I mean, there's a not a not a nicer man in college football than Bill Stewart. And a good football coach. Outstanding coach. So first and 10 for Rutgers near midfield down 11 points four and a half to play. Play action for Savage, looking downfield, and he's got Sanu, who makes a great catch inside the 35. Hogan on the coverage, first down. That's, that's, we talk about the demeanor. When you have the demeanor and you're cool and you're calm, you can make this type of throw, Chris. Well, more confidence. It's been a while since he hit a big play like this. And you got to have confidence in yourself. It's been two quarters before good things have happened for Tom Savage. He just threw a, a pick six the other way. And now you finally get a help from your defense to get a turnover moving down the field. So new, a true freshman came into the game with 41 catches. He's going to be a good one like Savage as Hartnick finds a hole. Rutgers running downfield. This half as opposed to the first half, a gain of five or six. Tonight, the final piece of the championship puzzle will be in place as Heisman candidate Colt McCoy and Texas take on a guy I guess you could say is also a Heisman candidate, Dominican Sue, for how good he's been for Nebraska. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game on ABC tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Well, Desmond Wynn, who came in for Howard Barbieri at right guard, is now shaken up. Caleb Rutsch would be the next man in at that right guard spot. Or Desmond Stapleton, whose brother Darnell plays in the NFL with the Steelers, also could come in and play that position or play tackle. Did I hear you say that this Nebraska defensive lineman, Sue, might be a Heisman candidate? To me, uh, let's talk NFL for a second. If, I'm, if I have the number one pick in the draft, that's the guy I'm taking. I think he's the best player in college football overall. And Sam, Dominican Sue in Nebraska. Did Sam Bradford say he was going to go play in the PGA? or He's not going to be the number one pick. You think he's going to come off that injury? It depends on who drafts. Who's drafting first? Well, Mel Kuyper's last draft had uh, Jimmy Clausen ahead of Mel, Sam Bradford. Mel Kuyper had me going in the fifth round. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still bitter. I'm still that. bitter. <laughs> and I love Mel. It finally Mel. came out, you know. <laughs> and I love Mel. It finally came out. <laughs> if you need a quarterback, Sam Bradford's your guy, by the way. <laughs> There's Sanu at quarterback, and he splits a couple defenders and gets to the 20-yard line. Another Rutgers first down. They got it going now. Now, if I'm Greg Schiano, what I'm doing is I'm going to run a little bit of tempo here because the Mountaineer defense, they're kind of looking around at each other. What's going on? What do we do? What do they, we got to stop them. What are you doing? And, and shiano has got the tempo going. They're going no huddle. And what they're doing is they're taking the fight right to West Virginia, and West Virginia is getting punched, and they're throwing zero counter punches back. Rutgers has lost 14 straight games to West Virginia. Greg Schiano's on eight against him. Martinick bouncing off tacklers. Gets nine. They had one rushing yard as a team that entire first half. And now they're starting to get it going. Take a look at that offensive line on the left side. The big guy, Anthony Davis. 61 is Blazik. Good hard running inside. That's that's what you that's what you need to get get some confidence on offense. You got to have some kind of a running game. You can't rely on your freshman quarterback to do it all. I mean, you got to have some kind of run game. And here's Sanu out in the flat, and he'll reach the first down marker before J.T. Thomas greets him there. And all depends on the spot here whether he got the first down. Looks like, yep, first down. First and goal now for Rutgers. And what Rutgers has done, a little, lot of two-back offense. The corporate and the fullback is doing a good job of lead blocking. And you got to remember that a lot of teams in college football don't see the eye formation very often. And so when somebody's pounding it at you, you're not used to defending it. And you're not used to the blocking angles. And you think about, well, what they saw last week against Pittsburgh, which should help them. But right now, Rutgers offensive line has been energized. Savage is split out to the bottom of your screen with Sanu and a quarterback. He'll run the other way. And he finds a hole. And he gets to about the five-yard line. He runs hard. Hogan made the stop. 
You talked about it earlier, Chris, ineligible his senior year of high school because he turned 19 years of age before the uh, semester started. True freshman. Yeah, what are these guys going to be like in two years? Savage and Sanu, right there, both true freshmen. You got Boharness on defense and linebacker, another true freshman. They had the best recruiting class ever here at the, the Rutgers this past year. Here's Martin. And good job by West Virginia's defense. Miller getting off a block. And if he didn't take him down, Sidney Glover, the safety was there. Loss of five. Yeah, I don't like that call. It was too slow in the backfield, too slow developing. This is an attacking defense. Watch Julian Miller here, and I always talk about this, is that never give one for one. What I mean by that, you take on blockers, you defeat the blocker, you create separation, and you make a play. His job right there was to make the ball bounce, which he did, but outstanding hustle, and he comes to make a play. That's how you play that defensive end position. Never give one for one. A total of two third down conversions in the game, and it's going to stay that way as that pass was off the mark intended for Sanu. Each team has one third down conversion in this game, and now it's fourth and goal, and Greg Shiano is going to have to send on the field goal team. Yeah, here. it looked like Hogan, may, there may have been some contact right there. He did, the ball's in the air. No, that's, that is... Was that's it catchable? That's pass interference. Well, if he hadn't held on to him, he would have been back in the end zone where the ball was coming. Now, San Santee missed a 45-yarder. was short by about five yards, but this is a short kick into the wind, and the wind has subsided. It's a 27-yarder from straight on. And he buries this one, and it's a seven-point game here late in the third. Check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. And here come the Bearcats. Tony Pike had been miserable. 9 of 26, 90 yards, two interceptions. Brian Kelly had just ripped him on the previous series. Looked as if he might even bench him. Good move to stick with him. He finds Marty Gilliard, his second long touchdown of the day. He returned to kickoff as well. 31-24, and Cincinnati's getting the ball back right now on a punt. I tell you what, that Marty Gilliard would be going up my draft board if I was a pro scout. Well, I, absolutely. And you think what he's done today, what he did last week with three touchdowns when we had him. I mean, he's kind of a poor man's Percy Harvin. He's that same type of player. Yeah. Just a playmaker. And, and I don't mean poor man. Of these. Percy Harvin's one of those special guys. Marty Gilliard just a notch below a Percy Harvin. Now, if he runs 4-4 at the combine, he's a first rounder. If he runs mid 4 fives, he's a second rounder. How many guys do you ever see catch him when he catches a ball like that? I don't he see many him. catch him. He, he runs plays away fast. from everybody. Wide receiver. He plays wide receiver, and he's a great kickoff return guy. Great story too. Remember, he was uh, ineligible there earlier uh, in his tenure at Cincinnati. Ended up being homeless as he was trying to uh, work and pay his way to get. Be able to go to school as Tavon Austin on the kick return for West Virginia is smoked at the 22 yard line. West Virginia coming off a turnover, a fumble by Jared Brown. Got his hand hit as uh, yeah. Munoz fell on it. Yeah. We'll see if that affects him throwing the football now. Yeah, he had his, he had reached his arm out. His hand was fallen on by the defensive lineman. I see he's kind of moving them fingers around. I don't know if that's his normal behavior, but anytime I see a quarterback on the sidelines, obviously he's aware. Of, would that affect him taking any snaps from under center? Here's Devine. Out to the 27-yard line. Gain of four before Eric Legrand makes the tackle on what will be the final play of the third quarter. Well, it looked like West Virginia after that interception return for a touchdown was going to run away with this thing, but Rutgers back within seven as we go to the fourth quarter in Piscataway. Follow the drive to the national championship on ESPN on College Football Final. You'll see all the big plays, the shocking upsets, and the great escapes that happen every week on the drive to the national championship. Saturdays at midnight on ESPN. Fourth quarter at Rutgers Stadium where West Virginia seeks its 15th straight win over the Scarlet Knights. Greg Schiano 0 and 8 in his nine years at Rutgers. Done a great job at this school but has not been able to beat West Virginia. 
Mountaineers have a second down and long, and Devine, who can go long, breaks a tackle. He's got the speed to take it the distance, but McCourty able to catch up to him at the 42-yard line. What do we talk about in the pregame, guys? You stop him, you stop him, you stop him, then you get this right here. Watch a little burst. There's the vision. Good block up front by Clark, making people miss. And if he wasn't slowed down, McCourty wouldn't have got him in free high, but McCourty can run now. This is an outstanding same. defensive play. Chris, this is the same thing we saw him do last week against Pittsburgh when he was backed up inside the 10-yard line. Devine had 38 yards before that play, and that was a 32-yard run as Brown is able to pick up 11 to the 31 yard line. D Imperio made the tackle downfield as West Virginia is moving it now. Well, Devine last week, Pittsburgh did a decent job against them, but he had that huge run, that 88 yard touchdown run. Otherwise, they shut him down. The difference there was that uh, against Pittsburgh, nobody touched him. Here he got slowed up a little bit. McCourty was able to run him down from behind. Divine over 1,200, make that 1,300 yards rushing now on the season. Lineman shifts over, Barkle to the right side, wind balance to the right. And nowhere to go. And Divine lost a couple back under 1,300 yards now for the season. To get the latest on the teams and players you care about the most, log on to ESPNChicago.com, ESPNBoston.com, and ESPNDallas.com. Will Tony Romo and the Cowboys collapse again in December? They've got the lead in their division. Big one with the Giants this weekend. Well, what happened to the Giants, huh? They're struggling after that great start. Second and 12 for the Mountaineers. And looks like a broken play. And Brown gets out of there. David Rowe bumps him out at the 35-yard line. Well, that'll drive you crazy. Not only because of the broken play, but where it happens. I mean, you're in, in, in good field position here, and every yard counts because you're talking about kicking a field goal into the wind. And you don't want to give any yards away, even if Brown would have tucked it up inside right there and got it back to the line of scrimmage. West Virginia with only one third down conversion the entire game. This is a third 13. It's probably a four down situation. It's too far to kick a field goal. Brown going to try to hit Devine, and it went through his hands. He had some green in front of him. Especially for a guy as shifty as Noel Devine. I think Stewart knew it, too. Yeah. <laughs> right here, they did a good job of they put Devine to the trip side, and they had a bunch, which all guys stacked together, and they created a little bit of a confusion as far as the record zone goes, and he did have room to work with, although he had Billy Anderson in open field. I don't know. I kind of would maybe put my money on Noel on Billy in open field right there, the situation that Bill Stewart wanted. Thus, you saw the grimace on Bill Stewart's face. And I like the punt, by the way, Dave. I know you're reading my mind. You got Instead of uh, the long field goal try. And this one will take a West Virginia hop inside the 15. So Kozlowski does his job as... Rutgers will have to start this possession at its 10 yard line. See how the true freshman Tom Savage handles this possession with his team needing a touchdown to tie the game. West Virginia on top of Rutgers 21 14 early fourth and the Scarlet Knights start this drive on their 10 yard line. They'll start with Mohamed Sanu at the quarterback position in that Wildcat formation. And he'll take it. Ahead to the 14 for about three yards. You can help us beat cancer. The V Foundation will proudly award 100% of your donation directly to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Jimmy V Week. And uh, you got the women's uh, games on Monday night, men's games at Madison Square Garden on Tuesday night for the Jimmy V Classic. Pitt and Georgetown, Indiana, and Butler are the four teams. Second down at six. Savage to throw. Trying to hit Sanu in the pass a little bit low. Third and six. Well, Savage is just a little bit off. Now he, he, he didn't come in early. He didn't come to spring practice. He only got only got here in the summer. In fact, he came over. He's from Philadelphia area, and he drove over 
uh, for a bunch of the practices. In fact, he made about 14 of the 15 practices and just stood on the sideline and watched as the uh, Rutgers went through their offensive practices in the spring. Scarlet Knights just one of 12 on third down. This is manageable for Savage here, third and six. And he's got time to throw, but he put it behind Tim Brown, who was covered by a linebacker, Reed Williams. It's fourth down. Fourth down and six. That ball looks like it could have been caught. Threw it a little bit behind Brown. Just a little bit off. You know, Tim Brown, the senior, has been a playmaker all year. A little bit frustrated. He's trying. He's playing with that bad ankle. The other thing which you need to do right here is get some type of field position from West Virginia, then capitalize on it because of the punt. It's going to be into the wind a little bit. Delagana to punt. And this is a good boot. Sanders all the way back at his 30. Gets a block. And he is finally brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. Well, he mentioned earlier in the game that Jared Brown filled in for an injury to Pat White in 2006 when both teams are ranked in the top 15. Brown with a 40-yard touchdown run this game. He also had a 22-yard touchdown pass. West Virginia had to go for two and made it. Mountaineers are up eight. And then Rutgers falling short, could not get the two-point conversion, losing in the third overtime. That outstanding game three years ago, Bill Stewart was an assistant at West Virginia. Rich Rodriguez, the head coach at that time. Out near football is Clark. Powers forward to the 47 for about seven. Munoz made the tackle. You know, it's interesting when you look at former backfields for these two schools and where they are now. You got Steve Slayton with the Texans Owen Schmidt and Pat White and then Mike Teal is the number three quarterback in Seattle with Brian Leonard who used to be with the Rams and Ray Rice having a great year for the Ravens. And that, that's the backfield. So you got Kenny Britt who was here last year that's tearing them up in the league. Got the game winning touchdown pass from Vince Young last week in the Titans game. Second and two and Clark with a huge hole. Nose dives to the 29-yard line. Well, it's clear what Bill Stewart decided to do and Jeff Teal. That we're going to go big. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to run the football, and we're going to pound it, and we're going to do it with Ryan Clark. Noel Devine, yes, he's a nice little mix. But right here, let's get powerful and see what we can do. And Ryan Clark has been coming along for a freshman. He's an outstanding player, not only as a runner, but he's been a very good lead, lead blocker. Had a first down on that game-winning drive against Pittsburgh before the field goal by Bittenkirk last week in the backyard brawl. Here's Devine trying to get to the outside, and he does. Boy, most guys would have got taken down in the backfield, but Devine got back to the line of scrimmage. You see the difference right there in Devine, the way he runs, a little scat back, as the play before where the, the Clark is more of a power back, and they, he runs it more between the tackles. Devine likes to jump it outside. You guys think we'll see Devine and other guys of his stature in the NFL? We showed you Ray Rice earlier, who's in the league. He's bigger, thicker, but about the same height. I, I think there's a bunch of them in, in the league right now. Jones, Drew is in the league. Uh, uh, there's some other guys that at that size, I, I think there's a definite place. Again, Rice and, and Jones drew a little bit bigger lower body than Devine as Clark takes it inside the 25 to the 24. Here's the 88-yard touchdown run last week against Pitt. See right there the difference is Pitt didn't have anybody with the speed to catch him, plus nobody really slowed him up at the line of scrimmage where McCourty had the benefit of somebody slowing Noel Devine up. McCourty with his great speed chased him down from behind. Well, the Rod Stevens Howling, who returned a kickoff for a touchdown, the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week, is about divine size. Close, uh, San Diego Chargers uh, turn it up. Here's the bigger Clark and a big hit at the 24 by Zaire Kitchen, sticking his nose in there. A nice job from the safety coming up. Get a little linebacker action, and they know what West Virginia is trying to do. You got the big fella Clark in there. They figure, like we figure, you're going to try to pound it. And watch kitchen. Say, I'll do the cooking in this kitchen. Bam! <laughs> Outstanding. Kitchen playing on senior day, fought through several knee injuries. Makes a good play there to force a 41 yard field goal attempt by Bittenkurt. This is his first attempt of the game. Kicked the game winner against Pitt last week.
and he nails it. 41 yard field goal is good and West Virginia leads by 10 midway through the fourth quarter. Big Kurt has missed just once all year. He's a freshman. He's now 14 of 15 on field goals for West Virginia. College football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Aflac, we've got you under our way. Welcome back to the birthplace of college football. Rutgers and Princeton met on November 6th, 1869. We can imagine the day was a lot like this. Yeah. Yeah. Cold, a little rain, a little snow. Unfortunately, uh, Chris, for Bob, we used up all of our jokes during the production yeah. meeting about that game. Well, I know that uh, little known fact that Coach Holtz was actually a GA for Rutgers at that time. <laughs> 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 no way. Yeah. Uh. West Virginia leading by 10. Josh Leiter will kick it away from the 30 it into the ground the last time they kicked Thank it you. deep is returned for a touchdown in fact the only time they kicked it deep good coverage there by West Virginia as Rutgers picked that up at the last second ahead of the 37 yard line as we check in with Reese in the studio a 36 I heard that but luckily for you coach didn't here's East Carolina and Houston in a Conference USA championship game Case Keenum picked off by Van Eskridge in the last two Conference USA title games East Carolina scores 10 turnovers, three today, seven against Tulsa last year. Dominic Lindsay next play, touchdown. The Pirates are up 31-19 despite nearly 400 yards passing from Keenum. Wow, East Carolina, 12-point lead here. West Virginia with a 10-point lead. Rutgers back to work on offense. And Savage going to Sanu. Defender got beat. And Sanu's got a touchdown. Two-yard touchdown pass to Sanu by Tom Savage. Glover got beat. Boy, I'll tell you, it starts with protection. You only rush three and you're playing zone defense. You better have one thing in your mind. Deep as the deepest. True freshman to true freshman. You got a hand that they came, keep coming back. They, it's a been a tough day for both of them. And the driving snow is good. Rutgers back within three. Oh, well, yeah, the kickoff return for a touchdown after the interception by Glover returned it. And now one play after West Virginia's field goal. Savage with his 12th touchdown pass of the year. Only a three man rush. Got lots of time. Glover over the top. Normally a safety. It's supposed to be deeper than the deepest. And Sanu just runs right by him. That's, uh, that's some learning experience right there. So it's been a tough day, most all day. It's been tough. The weather's been tough. West Virginia's been tough on him. He's been sacked four or five times. Completion percentage is down. He's been dropped balls. It's not over until it's over. That's a big play by a freshman. And, and guys, how about one of the guys that was talking to Savage, congratulating him and talking to him after that play, Dominic Natale who is from New Jersey, but he went to Michigan State, then he transferred here. He's had some injury problems. He started the year quarterback through three picks in that first game and got benched in favor of the true freshman. Greg Schiano says hey, he's a great kid, and he's been and he terrific his, as a teammate. He waited his turn behind Teal the last couple of years, yeah. finally gets his chance this year, and then the true freshman comes in and just uh, takes over. Delegato to kick it to Austin or Rogers. The Austin who has a kick return for a touchdown this season. Across the 30 and stumbles to the 32. Khalil Glaude tripped him up. Tonight, it's Colt McCoy in Texas against Ndamukong Sioux and Nebraska for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship game on ABC, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And both of you think Texas is going to win, right? But who's going to be number one at the end of the year? Yeah, I think Texas is going, to, is going to go ahead and take care of Nebraska tonight, although I do think it'll be a fight because I know that my ex-teammate at Ohio State, Bo Pelini, will have the Huskers ready to go. 
Going big here with Clark in the backfield. Try to pound it home. And Clark bounces off one tackler and then dropped at the 38 yard line by Munoz. A couple things. I love the adjustment by Bill Stewart and Jeff Mullen, his offensive coordinator, about going big to change it up in the play call. On the last touchdown from Rutgers, everything's been set up, run, run, short pass, short pass. They go over top, they caught West Virginia sleeping. The big play, outstanding coaching on both sidelines. Divine in the backfield now on second three. And a fullback shifts into that front of that eye. And it'll be Clark getting it straight ahead. And he'll come up a yard short as Ballone holds the point there. Five tackles for Scott Ballone, a freshman defensive tackle. He's also got a couple for a loss today. That's the youth of Rutgers. And why Greg Schiano so excited about the future of his program. Not only the youth on offense that contributes, big contributors, but the youth on defense. Bob, just take your eyes off the monitor. Don't look at that stat there about the, the third down conversions. I, that probably sickens you to see two for 24 combined. Well, coming in, the Mountaineers led the conference in third down conversions. Third and one. And Clark did not get it. Munoz in there. Kitchen, the safety was in there. Well, I love Kitchen and the game that he's played today. He comes up and becomes the eighth man in the box, lines up at a linebacker, and has made a number of plays from that linebacker position. And it's all about penetration, boys. You see them. They'll beat West Virginia to the punch. And you see guys shooting in there. You had red the shirts coming in there. You saw yep. some red shirts in between all of the white shirts. That's what Chris means by penetration and getting across the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and one. Greg Schiano told us in our meetings that he thinks Bill Stewart's got a fake punt in place. Hey. Uh, not here. Play clock at zero. I don't know that it reset, though. Delay a game. Delay a game. Now Bill Stewart is not arguing it, so it must have reset. But it did take a while for them to reset the football, so maybe the clock started before that ball was actually yeah, placed. They shouldn't shouldn't be that way. I mean, if they did take a long time to place the ball, you don't start the 25 second clock until the ball is placed, ready for play. And Rutgers came close to blocking that one. George Johnson almost got it. Sanu with the fair catch at the 29. Rutgers ball down three. 6 11 to go in the fourth quarter. Rutgers football down three here in the snow in Piscataway on senior day. The winner of this game will get its ninth victory. Both teams going bowling. West Virginia likely to the Gator Bowl. Rutgers not sure where it will end up. Scarlet Knights football inside their 30. And Savage will give it to Martinick. Knocked down after a gain of three at the 32 by Sands. And here's Reese. All right, Dave, get you up today. We've got wild back and forth games going everywhere. Big East, here's Deion Lewis again. Lewis is closing in on the Pittsburgh record for most carries in a game. Ironhead Hayward carried it 42 times against Holtz and Notre Dame. Deion's up in the high 30s. Tony Pike's had a tough day, but he's rallying now, finding D.J. Woods. Extra point was missed when Zach Kalaras couldn't handle the snap. 38-30, nine and change to go in the fourth on ABC. Wow. Good finish coming here as well, Reese. The Rutgers down three. And on the uh, Wildcat play, Sanu, the quarterback gets a couple. Going to bring up third down. Talking about all those carries that uh, Lewis is getting in that ball game. My old broadcast partner, Keith Jackson, used to say, wow, he, he's, he's not that heavy and he didn't belong to a union. <laughs> <laughs> third down and five at the five-minute mark. Guy that's been doing quiet is this young man right here, an explosive player, leading receiver, Timmy Brown. Been quiet all day. Battling an ankle injury in the game. As Savage throws high and complete. Had to throw that yeah, ball high. Yeah. There was a linebacker in front of it, Goldborn. 
It's a good job by Goldberg getting underneath the route and you got you should try to throw from the pressure blitz side throw to the blitz he threw away from the blitz right into the coverage of Goldberg dropping off into the short side of the field. Fourth down and five. And meanwhile on ESPN.com guys some news on Cincinnati head coach Brian Kelly will tell you about that when we have a moment. because it goes across the line of yep. scrimmage right. and advance it. So it'll be West Virginia football at the 40. If that would have been blocked and short of the line of scrimmage, then you could have picked it up yep. and run with it. It's Ken Richardson coming off the corner and gets low and does a good job of keeping the hand down, not up, and taking it off the foot. And he's beaten Graves, the tight end. Did he hit the ball or did he just hit the leg? That young man's been taught how to hold the football. Did you see that? He was going Tiki Barber on everybody. Yeah. High and tight. High and tight. So Kent Richardson with the block. Pittsburgh will take over at the Rutgers 40. Scarlet Knights at three timeouts remaining. Jared Brown going around slapping his offensive lineman. Don't goose him. Don't make him jump. West Virginia with a football down three. Devine taken down from behind for a loss by Alex Devestro at the 44. I was talking about uh, West Virginia. I accidentally said Pittsburgh. The news on Brian Kelly in that Cincinnati pit game is, according to ESPN.com, Brian Kelly said that next week, if Notre Dame were to ask to speak to him, he would, quote, entertain their request. Now, this, this, comes out, this comes out during the game. I mean, did he talk to somebody at halftime or what? No, no, it was on ESPN.com. Uh, Kelly was on a, a local radio show this week, said, I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. I love Cincinnati. My family loves Cincinnati. We've heard that before, though. Second and 14, Jarrett Brown inside the 40, down to the 35. Going to bring up a big third down here. McCourty on the stop. We're being told that story on Brian Kelly was just updated 45 minutes ago, so perhaps it was at halftime. <laughs> Tell you, a good player right now for West Virginia is Clark not only running the football, but he threw a heck of a block to spring Jared Brown. He essentially became a tailback in that formation, just a direct snap lead play with Clark leading the way for the quarterback draw here. I throw it out to, for the bubble screen. John Look, Sanders. They got these guys outnumbered. And some movement up front on third and six. Cool start. Offense, number 51, third yard down, third yard penalty, third down. That's Eric Job. That goes to third and 11 now. Hey, flip-flop, Madsen and Job. Job normally, the center sometimes will play guard. Madsen was in at center there, and Job came up out of his stance. Well, each team has only one third down conversion the entire game, and now... It goes from a somewhat manageable third and six to third and 11. Rutgers trying to get all of its players off the field. They fumbled the snap, the ball loose. And Rutgers has it. Silvestro recovers it for the Knights. Little confusion on the defense. I think Brown may have been looking over there. Maybe Madison may have been looking over there too. A bad snap. And this is what Rutgers needs to help their offense down the field. Defensive turnover. Chiano said this yesterday that, that whenever West Virginia substitutes, we have a trouble, we have some trouble getting our guys in there. But there is no penalty flag, and it's Rutgers' ball, so the block punt by West Virginia doesn't come back to haunt. It's got Scarlet Knights. Sanu got behind the defense again. The pass underthrown, though, incomplete. Savage had him as Sanu coasted past two defenders. It's the same thing. I mean, the first play, they hit him deep. If you're West Virginia, you got to think, man, why don't we hit him deep? And I'll tell you, Sands was in bad position. What happened, Savage threw... Sanu into the coverage. If he would have laid that ball on the outside, hey, there's nobody there. Hey, there's friend, nobody there. Friend, look at your screen there. You see that all that snow and that water and that perspiration yeah. coming down? 
That's that that makes the ball hard to throw sometimes. Well, I, and I understand that, but I just saw him do it five minutes ago. So do it again. Well, maybe with the wind blowing that way. Maybe the time before he had a dry ball. All right, Sanu in a quarterback now, <laughs> and he plows forward for about four yards into West Virginia territory. Oh. Julian Miller on the stop. They got guys with towels down there, Grease. <laughs> <laughs> let's, look, let's look again here, guys. Let's hey, I've been there and done this. I've I done know that. It. All right. If he stays out here, he's six. He throws the ball inside, which brings look, Sands over the ball to make a play. The ball curved. You he, can he, see the wind. There. He threw it so badly, the wind got a hold. It didn't have a tight spiral on it. Play's over, guys. Move on. All right, let's go. Next play. Right, Third and six. You just hate to see a big play like that go for naught. Savage. Pressure coming. And Savage threw it low. Brown should have caught it still, but it's incomplete. And Rutgers on fourth and six, and have to go for it here. And JT Thomas forced a bad throw. And I'll tell you, if he gives him a ball to work with, and I understand he was under pressure, but if he gets a ball to work with, Timmy Brown has some room to work in a good first down. But still, he's got he got to step in the throw. Yeah, but, but you got to catch that ball too. I mean, it's third down. It's the end of the ball game. Rutgers fourth down. They still have all their timeouts left. They don't pick it up. And they could possibly get it back if they stop West Virginia. So Dave right there is going to be a little crossing route to Timmy Brown. Right through the hands of Sanu and intercepted. Picked off by JT Thomas. It'll be West Virginia ball at the 46-yard line of Rutgers. Yeah, he just he just he didn't have to throw that ball that hard. That ball went went too hard and too high for the receiver to come down with it. Watch this, the protect. He's going to be throwing over to the right side. He's going to be wide open. Sanu kind of looked around where he's going to get hit, too. But again, the game's not over because Rutgers does have three timeouts remaining. Yeah, but, but if West Virginia gets a couple of the first oh, downs, you, then it you, is over. Oh, you give up a, a, a great opportunity. Oh, sure. Get the ball near midfield and you, and you squander a couple of chances to make first downs, at least first downs, and not a big play. West Virginia calls a timeout. Championship weekend continues tonight with the Dr. Pepper ACC title game. Georgia Tech, Clemson, two of the best running backs in college football. Jonathan Dwyer and C.J. Spiller on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. What do you guys think about this matchup as we look at the snow continuing to come down in Piscataway? I really like C.J. Spiller. You know, we're talking about backs going into the NFL and that. This kid may be the top back all purpose going into the kick, returning kicks, running from scrimmage, catching the football. C.J. Spiller is going to be a first-round pick. I like the matchup because it was uh, the opening game of the year. It was a great football game and a tough loss for Clemson. We'll see if they can come back and respond. It's going to be a great matchup. I'm not normally a fan of rematches, but I'm a fan of this rematch up tonight. Well, let's see what Jared Brown and West Virginia's offense can do here. Again, Rutgers with all of its timeouts remaining. They got the big back, Clark, running it. And he'll get inside the 45 to the 43. So he got three before Kitchen made the tackle, and then Rutgers calls a timeout. So Rutgers. that'll leave the Scarlet timeout. Knights with two remaining. Well, you're talking about the ACC championship. Don't forget, of course, you got the SEC championship today with uh, Florida and Alabama. What do you guys think it'll take for Alabama to shut down Tim Tebow and stop that Florida offense today? Well, I think Tim Tebow hasn't, they haven't been that explosive on offense all year. They have the ability and they haven't put up a lot of points on a lot of people and Alabama plays great defense, but that doesn't mean they don't have the ability. So what you have to do? Just give Mark Ingram the football. Hopefully you're able to run the football, eat up clock, and keep their offense off the field. Like I said before, I'm a big Tebow fan. He doesn't, you know, doesn't do it like everybody else does it, maybe. But when it gets down to crunch time and you need first downs or touchdowns, he gets it done. Meanwhile, second and seven for West Virginia. Two timeouts remaining for Rutgers. Here's Clark again, and the Knights get him after a gain of one or two. So third down and long. Rutgers with one timeout remaining. Now, if you're West Virginia guys with 151 on the clock, third down, do you throw it here? Or do you force Rutgers to take its final timeout 
by running the ball on third and seven or third and six, depending on where they spot it here. I try to force them to use their uh, timeout. Uh, you know what I would do? <laughs> I know this is going to be silly and uh, this is not Bill Belichick like, but I would run a little bit of a play action because I think it's been there or even a bootleg or something fancy. And if the play action isn't wide open, I have Jared Brown run it and make him use the clock, but at least put the option to throw the football to get the first down. Are you, it's third and six. Are you telling me you got Tom Brady running this play? Yeah, but well, <laughs> I got Jared Brown that can run the football a little bit better than Brady, and plus I know that Rutgers offense hasn't had success driving the football the length of the field on me. I'm just saying, I put Jared Brown and give him a little option here. Does the snow affect their decision? We'll see. Third down and six. There it is. There's play action, and Brown one on one with Johnson. Brown with the stiff arm, and the first down, and probably the game. That's exactly what you should do, and that's what he did. I think it was a great call. He had George Johnson out there in space, and Jared Brown this is got all, the better of him. This is also the guy that fumbled the ball last time. Look at where he's carrying that ball. Great stiff arm. He is carrying the football, but again, it's a great call. There's pulling guards. George Johnson actually in good position. His feet got crossed a little bit, and Jared Brown timed up the right jab right ahead. Good call, Coach. Good call. Well, when you got a guy who's 230 pounds out there against a 250-pound defensive end, it's not a mismatch. And Brown just pushed him down and got the first down. And ball came out as they tried to down it, but there's a penalty flag down. Yeah. Offside on Rutgers. Oh. On the exchange, the Knights had the ball, offside. but they were offside. Defense. No guard. Five yard penalty. First down. It's a good job of trying to time the snap. It's your only shot. Yeah, they did jump, but I'll tell you, they were close. They were close. You can't see from that angle whether they penetrated the neutral zone. Yeah, that's what that's what normally happens on that thing is the nose tackle right across from the center and the ball either goes too soon or slaps the ball and then the center loses control of it. Things could get a little testy because Rutgers is going to do it again and the West Virginia lineman and Bill Stewart won't like this. Watch them, they'll do it again. They're trying to jump the snap. Yep. Offside call again. Offside. Defense. Little guard. Penalty. Now, if you're Rick, if you're Pete Carroll, Rick Neuheisel, or Jim Harbaugh, you do, you throw a little play action, hit him deep right here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, by the way. It's not West Virginia's job to stop West Virginia. Uh, Ryan Clark, today's outstanding player of the game, brought to you by Remax, 58 yards on the ground and a touchdown, and a lot of those in the second half. West Virginia is going to beat Rutgers for the 15th straight time. Greg Schiano is going to fall to 0-9 against the Mountaineers. Not only the 58 yards, man, but he's been outstanding in being a blocker today. He's just really had a good football game. Jared Brown will take a knee. Rutgers will use its final timeout with 27 seconds left. Rutgers, 30-second timeout. By the way, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh are now tied at 38 apiece, as you see on uh, the bottom line. Wow. 540 remaining in that game. An offense in that weather. Yeah. yeah. Just tells me that nobody can play any defense anymore in this world. Scored 38 points, 76 total points in that weather? Seriously? You think, you think would you think your defense is uh, back when you were in college, if you had the spread to try and stop these little guys out, two on the right, three on the left, and they spread you left to right across the field. You think you guys could hold them to the amount point, point uh, that, that uh, you held them back then? Yes, with the benefit of the blizzard that they're playing in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. From Piscataway, West Virginia beats Rutgers 15 straight in the series. Won by the Mountaineers. They get their ninth win of the season. They'll have a shot at number 10 in a bowl game.
24-21 is the final. West Virginia beats Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights fall to eight and four and finish three and four in the Big East. West Virginia five and two in conference play. For Bob Greasy, Chris Spielman, our entire crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. I'm Dave Pash, ESPN College Football Scoreboard. Up next as we go to Reese Davis in the studio.